It's time for High School Sports on the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast of High School Sports on the NCW Life Channel is presented by Harvest Valley Pest Control, Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Confluence Health, Les Schwab Tires, Biosports Physical Therapy, Impact Auto Sales, The Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Town Toyota, Auto Mocha, JDSA Law and Weinstein Beverage. Now let's go live for all the action of tonight's coverage of high school sports on your home for local sports, the NCW Life Channel. Good evening, football fans, and welcome to Lee Bofto Field at the Apple Bowl along with Grant Olson. I'm Eric Grandstrom here on the NCW Life Channel as we're ready to bring you Big Nine football tonight between the Wenatchee Panthers and the Davis Pirates. Davis coming in with a record of 3-3. Three and three. They're 1-1 one one in Big Nine play. The Panthers, 5-1, and one, been rolling since that first game of the season. They are 3-0 and oh in the Big Nine right now set atop the standings, Grant. They're having a fantastic season. Tested last week, though, for sure, in that 15-10 to 10 yeah. win down in Yakima against West Valley. But they're a solid, solid ball club this year, without a doubt. Coming up on the pregame show, we're going to talk with the offensive line coach, Dave Jagla, about last week, and he was not happy. They did rush for over 100 yards, right. but, you know, as far as the team is concerned, <laughs> with Nate Blauman, I mean, they're expecting, been amazing. what, 300 yards every time they go up. It's been amazing. Yeah. Almost approaching, what, 1,000 yards yes. now on the season. He's just an unbelievable running back. Leads the league in scoring and yeah. just about every other category as well. And he had, what, I think 130-some-odd combined yards as they're using him out of the backfield. Right, I expect right. to see more of that possibly tonight. And that just makes this offense even more dangerous. It gives Camden Sermon somebody to throw to and maybe those short routes give him a little confidence for Sermon and I think we're going to see him play well tonight. Now another key for Wenatchee is they have Riley Coons back yeah. after being out for three weeks with a knee injury. He's going to help out if nothing else on the offensive line. Well he is. He's a great blocker but he's got great hands and when he gets open down the middle and catches that ball he can do something with it after the catch. Yeah. Might see that tonight as well. I'd like to see J.J. Jelson get into the mix a you little know, bit more as well. Well, I think we will see that. I think Sermon's going to throw more than we've seen tonight because they're expecting Blauman all night long, and I think we're going to see a little more passing game. Now, meanwhile, for the Davis Pirates, we had their game last week. It was a running clock in the second half. Eastmont got out to a 42-0 lead at halftime. So if you're Wenatchee, I think the thing to not do is overlook Davis and look ahead to Sunnyside next week. You know, it's a typical whatever you call trap game, yeah. and that could be one of those. But, you know, Eastmont rolled over this team last week. Davis didn't know what hit him even in that first quarter. So if Wenatchee can maybe jump on them quick here tonight. We might see the same kind of game, but Davis has some talent on this team. They do have some exquisite wide receivers, and the experiment of having Valencia back there, yeah. our quarterback, lasted one game last week. That was it. And uh, the, the uh, quarterback Reyes, is back. Jose back Reyes in is back. He'll yeah. be at uh, the starter tonight. you got to watch out. He's pretty dangerous. He's a talented athlete. Yeah. As you mentioned, one of those basketball players, right, that they drug off the, the basketball court onto the football <laughs> field. And Reyes at the Apple Bowl. It's the Wenatchee Panthers and the Davis Pirates. We'll have Dave Jagla joining us on the pregame show. Also, Riley Coons will be part of our pregame festivities as we get ready for Big Nine football on the NCW Live Channel. Don't go away. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent train comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. My awesome is being able to share my passion for yoga. I found yoga in my mid 40s to help me kind of de-stress and calm down and it actually changed my life. Washington Trust believed in me. I felt like, okay, they got my back. I can, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna go for it. It actually makes you feel like more brave. I do have a lot of awesome in my life. What's your awesome? Whatever it is, we'll help you get there. Game show continues here on the NCW Life Channels. We're visiting now with Coach Jagla, offensive line coach here for the Wenatchee Panthers. Good to have you on here, Coach. Good to be on. 
So talk about this team and the progression. It's kind of been a little roller coaster ride for you guys, but uh, still on your winning ways. Yeah, it's a week to week thing. I mean, we prepare for every team every week, try not to look ahead and try to improve on everything we do. We watch film and fix problems. It's like last week we had some problems and we fixed them and had a good week of practice. What, what is that? For those that aren't inside the football you know, room when you guys are doing film and things like that, um, you know, just as fans will go, I don't know what's going on, but something's happening. So is that the defense provides you a look you didn't expect? Is it just guys not maybe missing an assignment here and there? How does that happen? We usually are pretty in tune with the defensive front. You know, I coach O-line, so the line, each guy has a job, and I expect them to do their job, and they have a progression of things they got to get done every play, whether it's their first step or their head leverage or where to place their hands or keep feet moving or finish their blocks and and every week is something new, and we just got to improve. Well, it's been some spectacular <laughs> running uh, so far this year with Nate back there. And, and what does he bring, and what does he help you? I'm, I don't know if he makes you look better. I mean, the offensive line has to make the blocks for him to have the holes. But, man, he's slippery. Nate makes us look better. Yeah, it's obvious on film. He does stuff that line, uh, running backs don't do. You know, we've had a couple here in my 20 years, and he's one of the best. And it's fun to block for him. We give him a little little hole. He makes a bigger hole. He breaks tackles, gets some yak, yards after contact. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's one of those games uh, coming up tonight against Davis where, you know, it, on paper it should be a W. But it's a different thing when you actually put it on the field and you kick that football off, isn't it? Yeah, if you're not ready to go, um, Davis wants to beat us. Plain and simple. Every team we play, every week, they want to beat us. And me, I'm paranoid. So, you know, we're never... All coaches are paranoid, by the way. Yeah, we're never fully prepared, I feel. You know, I work my butt off to make sure the kids are ready to go. And, you know, we're learning. We're still learning. i still got a young old line, mm -hmm. you know, so they're getting better. Coach, you've had some guys that graduate from the school that have gone on to do some pretty special things. Uh, you know, Cody O'Connell most recently and Trey over at University of Washington. What is it about... Is this program, or is it just these kids that come through that, that make the difference? It's something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, once in a lifetime, you get six, eight guys that are over 300 pounds yeah. that can move. You know, Vinny, Vinny is a six, four guy, 320. He moves, mm -hmm. you know, so we're lucky. Yeah. 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 I always uh, say nice to have that Bentley in your lineup. Well, yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Well, Coach, thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Good luck tonight. Thank you. You bet. Keep everybody healthy, yeah, too. I will try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coach Jagler joining us here on the pregame show. We'll come back and talk to Riley and Fat Coons, who's back in the lineup tonight. Coming up next as we continue with the pregame show as Davis is here to take on Wenatchee next on the NCW Life Channel. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. Our pregame show continues here on the NCW Life Channel as we get ready for Davis and Wenatchee. Now I'm talking with Riley Coons back in uniform. Back in uniform Tell yeah. me about how you're doing on the knee. What was the deal? Well, uh, I had to extend it two weeks ago in practice on a Tuesday. Um, just wanted to play it safe, you know, make sure I didn't hurt it any worse than we thought. So when got, I went and got an MRI and then found out it was all everything's good to go. Um, so I'm back now, back 100% ready to go, ready to finish out the season. Being on the sidelines for the last few weeks and 
watching practice and also watching the games. What has that allowed you to see maybe that you wouldn't have otherwise? Well, I mean, it really shows just how like, guys step up. And, I mean, Josh Bouchon and Cam Whitehammer, they both came and played great tight end reps. Um, they played great. You notice, like, how schemes work. I mean, when you're in a game and they call a play, you say, okay, this is my job, this is my assignment, I'm going to do my job, I'm going to do my assignment. When you're on the sideline, you look at it from more analytical, you're like, okay, it's like third and three. It's, and in the game, you know it too, but it's really even more so on the sideline. You see the personnel they have, and okay, they have running a 4-3 and a 4-4 four, four front, they're going to blitz. We're going to hit a hot route, we're going to run power like Nate's rolling. So you really understand more what each, when you're on the, when you're the field, you're just playing. You, know, you, you kind of have it, but you're really just playing. And so when you're on the sideline, you kind of think of that from a coach's point of view, and you really kind of dial into what the team is doing and what they're trying to do. So it's more like analytics and stuff like that. But you just see guys step up. I mean, like I said, Bouchon and Lloyd Hammer both played great minutes tight end. So, On paper, you guys should win this game. But paper and playing on Friday nights, yeah. two different things. Um, tell me about Davis and what you expect. Well, Davis, I mean, they have, they have a new head coach, um, so they're coming in hot. Um, they're playing, playing really well this year. Um, I mean, you go into every game knowing, thinking you're going to win, knowing you're going to win. That's just to be your mindset. Um, but what, we, what we're thinking is we're just coming, we're going to execute, play our game, um, really just kind of dial up what we're known for doing, um, and just play hard, play fast, and then get ready for Sunday side next week. It's going to be a huge game for us. Um, so this week, really, our focus is just, like, get better at what we're doing mm -hmm. and then really just kind of tighten down the hatches and get ready for the last three weeks because it's going to be just a slugfest. I can't imagine you have a lot of free time with, you know, <laughs> keeping your grade points <laughs> no, up sir. and everything else. <laughs> but tell us about who Riley is off the football field when you have a chance to relax a little bit. Well, I do running start at the college. Um, so I usually... Yeah, I told you, he has no time whatsoever. Yeah, no time. <laughs> so I usually I get up early, um, do homework. Um, this is when I'm really busy. I get up and do homework, then I go to class, uh, and then I usually go straight from class to the high school. I have a class here every other day. Um, if I don't go to class here, I'll go home and do homework, um, eat somewhere in there if I have time. And then after class, uh, go come play football, practice a lot, get ready. And then um, there's weightlifting in there too, by the way. Weightlifting in there yeah. too. Got to get in the <laughs> weight room when I can. It's been harder in the season, but um, and then really. Um, just get what I got to get. Just gotta get what I'm getting done done. And then, like on road trips, I'll do homework on the bus. Um, <laughs> sounds kind of boring, but it's yeah, social like, life at all. Yeah, yeah. I have to like make time to get out. I have to be like, okay, like these two hours, I'm gonna go out and do it. I'm gonna go home, you know, stuff like that. But I mean, I I see all my friends all the time. I'll do homework when I'm with them. They don't like it, but I do it. Um, but I mean, really, it's just kind of a balancing act. And I mean, I, I think I do a pretty good job of making sure I'm not always studying or doing homework. But um. It's a good time. It's, it, I, I like being busy, and it's fun to be well-rounded and kind of get a bit of everything. Well, stay healthy tonight, number yeah, one. Have some sure. fun, and we'll uh, talk to you afterward. Awesome. Thank you so much. Riley Coons joining us here on the pregame show. We'll come back, get you starting lineups, and get you ready for football tonight here at the Apple Bowl. It's the Davis Pirates and the Wenatchee Panthers next on the NCW Live Channel. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's Automotive Alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's Automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. Grant Olson and Eric Grandstrom back in the booth with you as we are just about set for kickoff between the Davis Pirates and the Wenatchee Panthers. Wenatchee coming in at a 5-1 and one record. Davis at 3-3 three and three on the season. And Eric, it's kind of a different situation for us. We get to see the same away team yeah. twice in two weeks, and that's kind of odd. So it's for us, we know the team that's going to play here tonight because we had them last week at Eastmont. But. Absolutely. Captain's coming out on the field to Reyes, Jack Kersinger for the Davis Pirates on the offensive side, Jesus Martinez and Miguel Seha on the defensive side well, for the Wenatchee Panthers. The, uh, all the captains happen to be playing on offense. J.J. Jelsing, 
uh, Nate Black, Riley Coons, Camden Sermon, and Nate Blauman. Great night tonight. Not bad night at all. 55 degrees. West wind out there at about seven miles an hour. I think it's going to really cool down as we get through the night. Maybe even some rain showers. They are definitely in the forecast overnight and once again tomorrow. Hopefully, Eric, it'll hold off for the ball game tonight. Our officials here for the ball game tonight. The referee out there talking to the captains is Rich Halterman. The umpire is Terry Eaton. The headlines is Tiana Peterson. A female Fantastic. official here That's tonight. Awesome. I love that. Also, line judge is Jeff Graham and the back judge, Fred Carino, all from the Chelan County Football Officials Association. So, Wenatchee has uh, won the toss and elected to receive the kickoff. And so, the Panthers will be on offense. And time to look at that starting offensive front here for the Panthers and for the Davis Pirates defensively. And our lineups brought to you by TC Slingers. If it's rock, bark, sand, or soil, there's no need for wheelbarrows, shovels, or rakes. They'll place the material for you. Starting lineup for the uh, Wenatchee Panthers on offense. Camden Sermon is the quarterback. He's a junior. One wide receiver, Obadiah Young, 5'10", a junior. Johnny Amezqua, a 5'10", sophomore, gets the start at wide receiver, along with J.J. Jelsey, one of the better athletes out on the field, 6'185", pound junior. Riley Coons back in the lineup. Uh, you heard Eric uh, talk to Riley in our pregame game show 6'3", 235 pound senior Nate Blauman almost a thousand yards already this season he's the running back six foot 205 pound senior and then the offensive line and it's a good one Nathan Black Andy Jimenez Trey Jagla Sim Cass and Vincent Bentley head coach of the Wenatchee Panthers in his 16th season is Scott Devereaux ready for football here tonight on the NCW Life Channel. Appreciate you joining us here as we bring you the live coverage from Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl. Good crowd on hand tonight. Turns out it was senior night tonight, even though the Panthers have one more home game, but that is homecoming next week. So Not sure why. I guess you don't want to have senior night and homecoming on the same night because eh, you need to give the seniors their due. There's your answer right there. That's why. So Davis is going to kick the football away, and they list their kickoff man as Alan Mercado. He's number 25, and that's the man who's teeing it up out there right now, waiting for the ball delivery from Fred Carino. Meanwhile, J.J. Jelsing and Nate Blauman back deep, and boy, we've seen some interesting things on the kickoffs here this year, haven't well, we? We sure have. We've seen Jelsing, a 93-yarder against uh, Mount Boucherie, and also we should mention Sebastian Esquivel not on the lineup tonight, so that is a little bit of speed that the Panthers aren't going to have here tonight. He usually handles all of these and punt return so no Esquivel tonight here's the kickoff and we are underway it's a low line drive kick kind of a squibber down at the uh, 17 yard line picked up by Blauman there 25 30 he's up to the 35 and just gets tripped up uh, by Malachi Cook at about the 33 yard line so the Panthers will start there. First down and 10, our first possession of the ball game. Great to have you along tonight on the NCW Life Channel. Kind of an off night last week for Wenatchee in that narrow win over West Valley 15-10 where they rushed 35 times for 113 yards. Nate Blauman held for his lowest total of the season, just 65 yards rushing last weekend. He did get the uh, touchdown that meant a big difference in that one as the Panthers went on to get the narrow victory. First and 10 Panthers, I mentioned on the 34-yard line. Koontz from right to left on the offensive line. Also in motion, a Mezqua. Here's the, the uh, snap, Sermon, back to pass. He decides to run it, and he is going nowhere. Doesn't even get to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got to the 30-yard line. That'll be a loss of about four yards. A nice penetration that time by the Davis defensive front. Ricardo Vasquez was kind of shadowing what uh, Sermon was doing. The 6'4", 270-pound freshman comes Boy. up with a big stop on the play. Boy, that's a good-looking defensive tackle there. And the Panthers drop for a four-yard loss. Second down and 14 now. Sermon in shotgun with Blauman behind him. Two receivers split out left side. A Mezqua in motion. Here's the delay handoff to Blauman. Cuts it back inside. Wanted the outside. Now it's across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. And that will be a gain of about seven for Blauman up to the 37. Nate Blauman going around the right side, running behind Vincent Bentley. We talked about Bentley in the pregame show with Coach Dave Jagla, another one of these huge offensive linemen. And he says there's got to be something in the water here in the Wenatchee Valley. 6'4", 315 pounds. He's Man. only a junior. <laughs> over that right side, yeah. And he's got some help from Nathan Black over there. Sermon in shotgun once again. 
A couple of tight ends this time as Kuntz comes to the right side. Double tight end set that side with Blauman in the backfield. Handoff fake to Blauman as Sermon rolls to the left, goes over the middle of the field, and he has Kuntz there. He makes the catch 50 and then gets drugged down at the Davis 45-yard line. Well, we wondered if we'd see Riley Coons back in the mix after missing three weeks with a knee injury. He got the MRI. It all showed everything was fine. He got to practice all week this week, and right away they go to the big tight end on their first passing play of the game, and uh, good for a first down. 17 yards on that pass play from Sermon to Coons, and he's a great athlete, Eric. It's nice to see him getting a little bit more involved in that offense. First down and 10, Panthers in Pirate territory. 9.43 left first quarter. Here's Sermon back to pass over the middle. Has a receiver there once again. Wide open, 30, 25, and drops down at about the 23-yard line. They're going to mark him at the 25. Josh Bouchong with the big catch. Well, right away, uh, the Wenatchee Panthers, and that was something that Riley mentioned, too. He said, well, while I was out, Josh got some valuable time in there, and obviously Wenatchee saw something in the film against Davis with the linebackers cheating up to try to stop the run. That opens things up just behind him, and that's where they're finding the tight end on two consecutive plays. Absolutely. Nice pass by Sermon, too. He's hot here to start this ball game. Panthers, I mentioned they might throw a little bit more in the pregame, and we've seen that so far on this possession. Sermon looks at the wristband on his arm for the play with Blauman in the backfield. It is a handoff to Blauman up the middle. He's got lots of room. He's dragging Pirates across the 15-yard line down to the 14, and that's an easy 10-yard run for Nathan Blauman. Nice blocking up front by the Panthers that time. Well, you got the linebackers right now that are searching in the backfield for the ball. What are the Panthers going to do? Are they going to throw it? They're going to run some play action, and they're looking instead of reacting to the play right now. And they know Panthers by watching film or run heavy. They played a very run heavy team last week against Eastmont, so the fact that the Panthers are mixing it up to Wenatchee's advantage. Here's Sermon now in the backfield, Amezcua in motion, also Coons in motion from right to left, Blauman in the backfield. Handoff, Blauman, this is on the left side. Blockers in front, but nice pursuit by the defense of the Pirates and caught from behind that time by Davis in a nice play. Well, Andy Jimenez pulled out to block on the play, but didn't find any opposite colored jerseys. That's the assignment you're given as an offensive lineman. Find somebody else with a different colored jersey on and hit him. There were two Pirates out there stringing the play out. No gain, and uh, Jimenez got to do a little bit better job when he pulls out there. Second down at 10 now for the Panthers. Ball at the Davis 14-yard line. Nice long drive to be in this football game for the Panthers. Sermon shotgun, and boy, that's offside. That's probably the easiest call of the night right there. Luis Guardo, Guardado, I should say, 5'9", 185-pound senior, just a little bit anxious. And that'll give the Panthers five more yards. Uh, at least it's the first penalty not on the first snap of the game. We've had so many flags oh boy, haven't we? this year in our coverage of football. It's you know, We're seeing it a lot on Sundays. We're seeing it certainly a lot on Friday nights, Absolutely. Too. Two receivers this time split out to the right side of Sermon. It's a Mezqua and Jelsin out there. On the left side for the Panthers, Obadiah Young. Here's Sermon. He's going to roll to the right. Has Blauman ahead of him as a blocker. Sermon directing traffic into the end zone. The ball is tipped. I don't think Jelsin even saw it coming. They may have been to a Mezqua in the corner of the end zone. It was just a weird-looking play. Jelsin with his head down that time, and almost an interception. Yeah, should have been picked off by Davis in the end zone, and... Uh, well, that's one thing that Sermon has done well so far this season is protect the football and value the football. He did throw his first interception of the year last week in the first half against West Valley and should have been picked off there. Panthers lucky to have a third down and another shot here. And even on the season, Eric, he's 83 out of 129, and that's not a bad percentage for a quarterback. Third down and five now. The ball at the Davis nine-yard line. Little high snap, quick pitch to Coons. The ball is fumbled, and it's picked up by Davis. I think they're going to call that an incomplete pass because it was a forward shuttle. No, they're going to say it's a fumble. Boy, Grant, that's a forward pass. And all the coaches of Wenatchee, Eric, are yep. saying just exactly what you're saying down there. Now they're going to chat about it a little bit. Yep. That should be an incomplete pass. It should be incomplete pass because it's a forward shuttle and he never got the ball and that's exactly right. what the officials are doing. A good job by the officiating crew to get together on that one and discuss exactly what happened. And made the right call, you're exactly right, Eric. So if Vinatti will have the ball back, fourth down and about five yards to go for the Panthers, make it four. 
What do they do here, Eric? They go for it or kick? I don't see the kicker out there yet. No, nope, they're going to go ahead and go for it and try to set a tone here early. The tone in the last couple of plays, not so pretty here for the That's Wenatchee right. Panthers so far. All right, big fourth down play right here. Fourth down and about four. There's Sermon. He's flushed out of the pocket. Flags come flying in. The pass a little bit high. Jelsing doesn't Ooh. make the catch in the corner. Thought he might have it for a second there, but let's check this flag. It might be holding. It's in that area. Let's see. If I'm Davis, I'd decline that penalty and take the football on the incomplete pass. Absolutely, and that's what's going to happen here. And Davis will take over. First down and 10 on downs. And that was a pretty darn good drive, Eric, as the uh, Panthers used almost five minutes off the clock and 10 plays and come up with nothing. You know, I don't know what it is that happens after the ball is kicked off. We watch Sermon over and over and over. I go and watch him in practice. We watch him in pregame warm-ups. And this kid can zip the ball oh. all over the field. But for whatever reason, and again, two times on that drive as it petered out there, almost should have been picked off. That throw in the end zone should have been caught. I mean, it would have come back no matter what on the pass, on the uh, holding up front. But uh, Sermon just not quite in the zone right now. First down, Davis now on offense and buried immediately as he tried to get to the 10 yard line. It is the running back for Davis, and that is who is the running back? It's Raimundo Gutierrez on that carry. And no gain on first down. He ran into a brick wall right at about the nine yard line. Yeah, defense up front for Wenatchee with the two Lloyd Hammer boys, Alex Dorton out there, Andy Jimenez on the defensive line. That's a tough task for Davis. There's Reyes, delay handoff again. Once again, it's Gutierrez, has a little more room, but not much more, gets two yards that time. And quickly, the Pirates facing third down and eight. Well, this is the kind of trouble they had last week, too, against Eastmont, Eric. You were there, you saw it. It was just they couldn't get anything going on offense. Yeah, they had, what, one positive yard in the first, in the entire first right, half? Right, right. As Eastmont raced out to a 42-0 lead at halftime. Back Reyes. to pass Reyes again. He is, and he's under pressure. Might have been a face mask there. The official looked like he was grabbing for a flag. No call as Reyes down at the nine-yard line. Good job by Alex Dorton to get in there and get a hold. Of, he had a shoulder pad, and that's what he brought him down with, right on the front of the pad, right on that right. crease, and he just uh, just brought him down. I mean, that shows a lot of strength right there for Alex Dorton, and that'll go down as a sack. So that's the first sack of the night for the Panthers, and there were lots of them in that game last week against Eastman. I think eight total, wasn't it, Eric? Yep. Eight or nine in the ball game. Yep. All right, our first punt of the night. And the punter, Jose Reyes, the quarterback. And no, it's a kind of a, it's Marcus Cook that time. And it's taken by Jelsin at the 44-yard line. Ooh. And he gets flipped Jeez. over at the 35. Wow. And a nice tackle that time. Malachi Cook, 5'10", 165-pound junior, flips Jelsin over and drops him at the 35-yard line. But boy, what great field position for the Panthers on this, their second drive of the night. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Harvest Valley Pest Control. You can rest assured Harvest Valley Pest Control uses KID and pet safe material around your home or office. Call today for your free estimate. Also by Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort trained specialist specializing in commercial and residential HVAC systems online at DixHeatingWenatchee.com. Panthers first down and 10. Great position, as I mentioned, at the Davis 35-yard line. Handoff, Blauman left side, gets a block and makes a move. 25-20, still on his feet, into the 10, knocks a pirate down. How about that? He just knocked him right on his back at about the eight-yard line and all the way down to the eight. And a nice run once again by Nate Blauman. They're going to put him down at the 10-yard line, 25 yards on that play for Nate Blauman, and he just shows how shifty he can be on the outside. And so strong as well. Once he needs that power, he's got it. Six feet, 205-pound Nathan Blauman. Four carries, 42 yards already. Panthers first down and 10 at the 10. I think it's first and goal. Here's Sermon. He's going to run into the end zone. Untouched. No flags down. Touchdown, Panthers. 10-yard run for Camden Sermon. Beautiful fake, by the way, to Nate Blauman. The linebackers completely bit on the fake. Everybody started watching number 23. Camden Sermon tucked that ball away. A good fake by him as well to keep that ball hidden from everybody else. Give Jelsing credit for a great block on the corner into the end zone for the touchdown run. There's that funky formation the Panthers have used a couple of times this year. Going for two here. 
There's the pass, and that was just ugly right off the bat as it's incomplete at the five-yard line, so the two-point conversion, no good. So with 4.38 left to go here in the first uh, quarter, it's Wenatchee 6, Davis nothing. We're back in 30 seconds. Stay with us. At Town Toyota, we believe in our community, and we're proud to support this broadcast of local sports. Town Toyota defines reliability and value in both its products and in the dealership itself. We are home to legendary products like the RAV4, Highlander, and Camry, not to mention Tundras and Tacoma trucks. Of course, we offer service for everything we sell and a great selection of pre-owned and certified vehicles as well. So enjoy the game and visit Town Toyota for all your automotive needs. That scoring drive for the Panthers, only two plays, 35 yards, and only took 52 seconds off the clock. Uh, the two-point conversion, no good. The touchdown, by the way, a 10-yard touchdown run by Camden Sermon. So with the uh, point after try, no good. 6-0 our score with 4.38 left here in the first quarter. Fast-moving first quarter, Eric. Camden Sermon's third rushing touchdown of the season, and that was just a beautifully executed play. Cesar Gonzalez to kick it off for the Panthers. High end over end kick. It's taken at the 20 yard line. A nice Look move out. initially and along the sideline some running room and Davis is going to be in business now. Flag almost out. to midfield. Cursinger on the return but a flag is down at the 32 yard line. I think this one's coming back. Positive play for Davis there. We, we mentioned we did the game last week against Eastmont. Eastmont, there weren't a lot of positive plays for the Pirates. That was one of the better ones here tonight. But as Eric mentioned, it looks like it's going to come back. Here's the call, and it is holding on the Pirates, and it will move Davis back. Our broadcast tonight here on the NCW Life Channel brought to you in part by Global Car Care a quality auto repair facility with highly trained technicians celebrating 25 years in the car care business. They speak your car's language at 1840 North Wenatchee Avenue. Also by Confluence Health, dedicated to improve their patient's health with safe, high-quality care in 12 communities throughout North Central Washington. So Davis could have had it at about the 45-yard line. Instead, with that holding penalty, we'll have it at the 22 to, for this, their second possession of the night. The first possession didn't go so well as it was three and out in a punting situation for the Pirates. So we'll see if Davis can get on track and get something going offensively here as Reyes comes back out to lead the offense. Jose Reyes, only a junior, six foot, 175 pounder. He's in shotgun. Damian Corbray comes to the right side. He gets the handoff and there's Lloyd Hammer with the penetration. Lloyd Hammer comes back and then makes a tackle. How about that? For about a three yard loss on the play. Kids, you never give up. Holy you never cow. give up. And that uh, Chase Lloyd Hammer on senior night tonight. The senior comes through with a fantastic play. Gets the penetration on the left defensive side, stays home, messes with the run to make him run around him, and then gets back <laughs> on his feet as he cuts back and gets a three-yard loss. Second and 13 now for the Pirates. Pass over the middle. Got a receiver there. Nice throw by Reyes. And then hammer down at the 30-yard line. Won the reception uh, for the Pirates. The number 10, Tyler Ger Gerard. And that's a nice gain up to the 30, as I mentioned, and a nice hard tackle from the Panthers that time as well. Well, they had it at the 19, so that's an 11-yard gain. Still looking at third down, but short. Handoff, fake handoff, and it's out in the flat. The pass, will he get to the 30? No, and a nice defensive play again. Damian Corbray again. He's only 141 pounds. And that'll bring up a fourth down for the Pirates. Loss of two on the play. Boy, there's just no way they can go for this, is that Eric? They're sure showing that they are. Now they're going to change their mind. Inside their own 30, that would have been pretty pretty risky at this yeah, stage and, of the game. And but at this point, you don't want to just completely right. Maybe you know, if you're at throw midfield. caution to the wind. Right. It, exactly. Absolutely. Speaking of the wind, a little bit of a breeze into the face of the punter here. And the punter is Marcus Cook, a very good athlete. Good snap. Kick is a spiral line drive right to Jelsin at the 38-yard line. Makes a move, gets by the initial tacker, tackler, 45-50, makes a move and does get into Davis territory. So once again, for the third time tonight, the Panthers are going to have pretty good field position. Their first drive was at their own 34, last possession at the Davis 35. And this one will be at the Pirate 48-yard line with 2 minutes, 31 seconds left to go here first quarter. 
Our broadcast tonight on the NCW Live Channel brought to you in part by Les Schwab Tire Center. Go online to leschwab.com to find a tire store near you and be sure to check out their fall tire sale going on now. Camden Sermon brings his offense up to the line of scrimmage. Jelsin on the weak side in front of the Panther bench. Split out. Two receivers to the left. Blauman now moves to the left side of uh, Sermon as well. Sermon back to pass. Flushed out. Then throws it into the ground. And Blauman had all kinds of real oh estate my. to run. That ball was just right at his ankles. It goes incomplete. Good job by Sermon to read that they were coming on the blitz. Did Davis on that play. And, and as you mentioned, Blauman wide open. And he had 20 yards oh. of free turf over there. But just a low throw as the blitz was coming at Sermon, had to get rid of the football. Brings up second down and 10 now for the Panthers. Clock stops on the incompletion at two minutes, 10 seconds. High snap, Sermon corrals it to Jelsin inside screen. Jelsin Hayes got speed up the middle, plows right over a pirate out across the 35 down to the 33 yard line. Gain of 15. I love that play where the receiver comes wide and then comes back towards the line of scrimmage. Basically a receiver screen in the middle. Good blocking downfield by the offensive line and a gain of 15 yards for J.J. Jelsing. And Miguel Seha took the brunt of that. Only 155 pounds as Jelsing just plowed right over him at about the 35-yard line. First down and 10, Wenatchee. 33-yard line of Davis. Handoff, fake handoff to Blauman. Sermon's flushed out of the pocket. Floats one to Coons. Beautiful pass. 20-15. Coons cuts it up field and is down at the 13-yard line. 20 yards on that pass play from Sermon to Coons. Knee injury? I don't think wow. he has any thought of that knee injury right now. And again, a good job by Sermon to evade the rush as I believe it was big 88 Nick Sosa that came on the blitz from his linebacker position. Davis is laying the ears back. They want to come and they get really after are. Sermon here tonight. But uh, Camden comes up with a great touch, little floater on the sideline to Riley Coons and Coons right in this ball game. And of all the players last week for Davis, I think Sosa may have played the best game of all of them, don't yep. you, against oh, Eastmont? Here's Sermon now on first down and 10. Goes over the middle this time. Pass is caught. A mesquite. How did he hold on to that ball? At the one-yard line. Ho, 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 ho. He gets popped down there on a 12-yard pass play. Sermon's got it going on now as a mesquite is going to come to the sideline. I don't know how in the world he held on to that football. Kersinger came in from the end zone and absolutely laid the wood to him at the one. <laughs> Not only did he hang on to it, but then he hit the ground and still hung on to it. Just a tough kid, that's for sure. He's not very big either. Uh, Jonathan Amezqua, 5'11", 145 pounds, only a sophomore. Now they got Coons in the backfield. I formation, Coons the fullback. He's going to lead the way for Blauman into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. One yard touchdown run, Nathan Blauman. You think when Anchi missed Riley Coons over the last three oh, weeks? Oh man, such a great <laughs> blocker, isn't he? He certainly is. Just so athletic. And, and for Nate Blauman, that's his 15th rushing touchdown of the season. You got to check and see how these school records are, right, Eric? Yeah. How close he is. That's got to be right in there. The season record. That's probably going to fall as well by Blauman before we're done here. Kick is up by Gonzalez, and it's good. With 22 seconds left to go in the first quarter, it's Wenatchee 13 and Davis nothing. We're back to the Apple Bowl in 30 seconds. Stay with us. No sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Yeah, 
And welcome back to the Apple Bowl. Grant Olson along with Eric Grantstrom. That scoring drive for the Panthers. Four plays, 52 yards, 2 minutes, 22 seconds off the clock. One-yard touchdown run by Nate Plowman. The point after try, good. And the Panthers now lead it 13 to nothing. Dominating drive that time, Eric. Absolutely. And uh, I give Davis credit. Uh, they've got a lot of spirit here tonight, but I think the Panthers just a much better team. By the way, we've got a score for you after this kickoff, Grant, of Sunnyside and Eastmont. Stay tuned. Big game tonight. Cesar Gonzalez, another high end over end kick that's going to be taken by an up man at the 23 yard line. Once the outside cuts it back upside across the 30, almost to the 35, and he's going to be marked down at the 34 yard line. That run, Jackson Kurtzinger, the senior for Davis. Two minutes left, first quarter, and it is Sunnyside six, Eastmont nothing. Wow. Sunnyside scored a touchdown, missed the extra point, or the extra point was blocked, excuse me. That is going to be a, a barn burner, I'll tell you what, down in Sunnyside tonight. Panthers have Sunnyside coming up. Homecoming next week. It's going to be so fun, oh, isn't it? Oh, man, I'm telling you. First down of 10 now for Davis, their third drive of the night. First two have resulted in punts. Here's a pass by Reyes. Why oh, not right air open. it out? He was open. Oh. Nobody home. Marcus Cook over there. You know, Reyes, for a guy that, that is a basketball player first, he was an all-league Big Nine basketball player last year. Great job looking to his left and looking off the cornerback on the far side of the field. That was J.J. Jelsing on coverage over there. And then coming back to his right, Marcus Cook, wide open, just missed it. And I'll say it, Jelsing bit. He looked at his eyes, and he was moving to the left side as Reyes was looking left, so it worked. And just incomplete. Second out of 10 now for Davis. Ten seconds left to go first quarter. Reyes, handoff delayed in the backfield to Gutierrez, and boy, just nowhere to go. Tough, tough Panther defense. Say unstack it there. Looks like uh, Waterman's in the ball game. He was part of that tackle along with Andy Jimenez, the 5'9", 235-pound senior up front. Says, uh, no, I don't think you're going anywhere, and it'll be a third down when we start the second quarter, Grant. All right, after one quarter of play here at the Apple Bowl, it's Wenatchee 13 and Davis nothing. We're back on the NCW Life Channel in 60 seconds. Stay with us. My awesome is being able to share my passion for yoga. I found yoga in my mid 40s to help me kind of de-stress and calm down, and it actually changed my life. Washington Trust believed in me. I felt like, okay, they got my back. I can, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna go for it. It actually makes you feel like more brave. I do have a lot of awesome in my life. What's your awesome? Whatever it is, we'll help you get there. Turn to live action, pass down field, flag is down, the ball is picked off by the Panthers. It's run back 40, out of bounds. No, he's not, yeah, he is at the 37 yard line. Dawson Pike with the interception on the deflection, but the flag looks like it might be coming against Wenatchee. No, they're clapping Panthers their hands. Are clapping their hands. May have been holding on the offensive line, I don't know. Reyes. The flag came in from the defensive, or from the uh, defensive backfield. Wait a minute. The official just whistled a hold against the defense. And it was declined? Why would they decline yeah, there, it? Yeah, uh, Sonny said would take that, I would assume, because there was an interception on the play. Now he's saying, it is okay, Panthers he motioned okay. the wrong way. Now Davis coach wants to know yeah. what the heck's going on so, over there. Oh no. Hang on here. The man who threw the flag is the back judge, Fred Carino. I think he's telling the official, our white hat here tonight, that the flag is against the defense. A hold, holding. And it still doesn't have it right. 
it's a hold against the defense. Oh, my God. So from the previous <laughs> spot, it'll be a 10-yard penalty, first accepted penalty against the Panthers here tonight. It has been a clean first half. It really has so far, even though we're just into the second quarter. Great to have you along, by the way, Grant Olson, along with the NCW Life Sports Director, Eric Granstrom. And that's a first down at 10 now for Davis at their own 44-yard line. Reyes is going to keep it on a keeper. Here's Lloyd Hammer. Nice block to spring Reyes around the corner. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a block by Gutierrez. Gutierrez. Yeah, Raimondo Gutierrez got out on the outside there. And Reyes, tell you, he's a, he's a talented player. He's not a first-teamer in basketball for nothing. We do have a <coughs> Panther down on the sideline, however. And it looks like J.J. Jelsing Ooh. is on his back <coughs> as he was near the place where the play went out of bounds. And so he made the tackle and took the brunt of that one here on the uh, far sideline in front of the Wenatchee bench. But you're right, though. If Gutierrez wouldn't have got that uh, block on, on uh, Lloyd Hammer, that would have been a loss of about three yards. Nicely done. Jelsin is back on his feet. Looked like he might have got his bell run a little bit. Yeah, it could be. Of course, in all levels of football now, they have the concussion protocol. So they'll take the player's helmet away and uh, do some checking of him on the sideline, making sure that... He's making sense. Last thing you want to do is have a brain injury oh, that absolutely. will last your lifetime just because you're playing high school football. Absolutely. Second down and seven now for the Pirates. Ball is at their own 47-yard line. It's a little over 11 and a half minutes left to go in this first half. Panthers up 13-0. Reyes with a couple of carries plus one yard now. Not a lot of total yards for Davis so far in this half. Fake handoff, play action, favorite play Got of the it. bat football, and that's why, because it works. Pass down to the five-yard line, caught by Kurt Singer. And they're going to mark him at the four-yard line. 43 yards, excuse me. Oh, nope, hang on. we got a flag oh. and a hold on the offensive it's line. Coming it's back. coming back. Wow. I'll tell you, I have, play action is the best play in football, Eric. It works like that to a T if what you a, do it right. What a heads-up play by Jose Reyes, and I'm not sure if he got the motion from the coaching staff. J.J. Jelsing, injured on the previous play, goes out. Guess where they go? Right where J.J. Jelsing just left the ball game. Good call. And they yeah. almost had a big play down deep into Wenatchee territory. Yeah, as you mentioned, that would have been a 43-yard play. That ball was money. Right to Jackson Kurtzinger. Instead, the ball is going to get moved back to the 34-yard line. And it's going to be second. Or will it be third? Second down and about yeah, 20. A little bit more than again. 20. So here we go. Davis split two receivers left side. One to the right. Reyes is going to put it up. There's Lloyd Hammer and a jailbreak by the Panther defense. And Reyes goes down at the 29-yard line. Lloyd Hammer and Ty Waterman got in there, and it was just meet me at the quarterback, and they did. Dropped him for a loss back to the 29-yard line. Third and forever coming up here for the Pirates. Boy, third and 25 now in that five-yard loss. We'll see what Davis can pull out of their magic hat with the third and 25 here it's pretty pretty ugly down in distance now you got Marcus Cook as a wide out uh, you always got to watch him there's Reyes handoff it's a fake blitz up the middle forces Reyes Reyes to the left side passes and it's picked off by the Panthers at the 35 yard line he looked like the receiver out there when in actuality Obadiah Young the defensive back, and he gets the pick. Well, it took two interceptions in this series for the Panthers to get one, but they'll take it at the 35-yard <laughs> line. Tough play, rolling to his left, trying to get away from pressure. Reyes rolled out there, right-handed quarterback, running for his life to his left, threw the ball, intended for Big Sosa, his tight end, but right there is Obadiah Young for the turnover, and the Panthers with the ball in business at the Davis 35. The second time tonight they've had the ball at the Davis 35. The last time, a touchdown for Wenatchee. We'll see if they can duplicate that. Sermon, the shotgun, throws it down right side, has a receiver. He looked a little bit late. Good coverage down there, too. Their tended receiver, Dawson Pike, goes incomplete. Pike was there. He just uh, was kind of twisted around on the play. Pretty decent coverage downfield for Marcus Cook on the corner over there. And uh, just a ball that, um, you know, he just couldn't find in the lights down there. And you mentioned earlier in the pregame, too, I think, Eric, that Marcus Cook, a great athlete as well and a very good basketball player. Yeah, absolutely. Trips this time left side. Three receivers to the left of Sermon. Blauman in the backfield. Quick pass in the flat of Mezquah. 
35 makes a move towards the middle of the field, then gets hammered down at about the 31-yard line. Tough gain of four yards that time for Omezqua. Boy, big Luis Guardado Ooh. coming at him and just laid the wood to him sure as he did. tried to cut back there. And that's one of those things, as a little wide receiver, you got to be careful about. As you come back towards the big fellas, the big uglies are looking for you. Especially when you're 5'10", 144 pounds. So third and six for the Panthers. The ball at about the 31 and a half yard line of Davis. As the Panthers this time split out Dawson Pike to the right side. Obadiah Young's over there with him. Now a couple of receivers split out to the left. It's Last time they did this, they did that pitch up the middle to Coons. Sermon play action this time over the middle and it's picked off by the Pirates. Right into double coverage and the uh, Pirates are drugged down at the 21 yard line. Interception for Davis. Xavier Guerrero coming up in the passing lane there. I'm not sure where Sermon was going with that football. There was double coverage or at least two Davis Pirates where the ball came down. I'm not sure if he was looking over the top for Coons on a post pattern there. Whatever the case, it's a pickoff and right back Davis has the football. Boy, that's a, a really a squandered opportunity for the Panthers. Great field position. You were handed the ball at the 35 yard line and then an interception and you're already up 13 nothing. So Davis back on offense. Had a little something going and then a penalty killed the Pirates on their last possession. They're going to have it here at their own 10 yard line with nine minutes 30 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Own 21 yard line. Oh 21 yard line. I'm sorry. First and 10, pass left side, and it's caught wide open over there across the 30. And that'll be a gain of about nine. Zach Valencia, he's the guy who played quarterback last week. They said he's a baseball player, came out two weeks in the base in the football season, says, hey, I want to come out and play football. They had to get him eligible, first of all, and then they realized this guy's an athlete. We need to do something with him. Last week, they had him play quarterback. This week, they got him as a wideout. It worked 10 yards that time on the first really positive play that the Pirates have had through the air. Handoff this time, Gutierrez almost lost the ball on the exchange, gets it back and then loses three yards. Back to the three yard, 30 yard line. Panther defense up front is just so stout up there. As Eric mentioned, the Lloyd Hammer brothers up there. Jimenez takes up a bunch of space. Wenatchee defense, second of the Big Nine, allowing just 774 rushing yards, 920 passing yards, uh, 98 points, just 16.3 points per game allowed by this Panther defense. Very tough, and number one in the league in offense. Second down and 11, ball at the Davis 31-yard line. Reyes, a fake handoff again. He's got Lloyd Hammer right in his face, does get the pass off, and that'll be close to a first down again across the 40-yard line. It's Sosa. And he'll be down at the 42. A flag is down in the backfield. This Flags could be down after the play. This is going to be a dead ball foul. So it, they may give them the first down, and then it may come back because there was some extracurricular after the play as Estevan Escamilla for Davis was uh, jawing back and some shoving and pushing going on with Obadiah Young back there. Gain of about 10. It was second down and 11. Not quite a first down. It could be first down on the play and then mark it back 10 yards. I think that's what they're saying out here. I don't know if they got the first down. It looks like maybe they did, I guess. Yeah, it's at the 42. So that's an, what, 11-yard gain on the pass play. We haven't seen a call yet, have we? Nope, not yet. Hmm. Okay. So they're going to set the chains and then the dead ball. I think they're going to march the penalty against. I'm not sure if it's against the offense or defense here. I think it's against the offense. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Yes. So they get the first down because that was awarded before the play was over. After the play was over, then you have the personal foul against the offense. So they'll have first and 25. Gotcha. Or are they going to move the chains again? I don't think they should be moving the chains. I think it should be first down and 25 yards, not first and 10. Yeah, no, they, yeah, they shouldn't have moved the chains. Huh. The officials are not going right. to change it, but uh, they shouldn't have actually moved the chains. First and 10, <laughs> anyhow, from their own 27-yard line, Reyes shotgun. 
Back to pass, has plenty of time this time, under some pressure now, floats one over the middle, a dangerous pass, a Mezqua comes up with the football and Wenatchee has it back just like that. So Young with a pick and now Amezqua with a pick and a dangerous pass for Reyes. Tried to float it out in the flat there and that just ball hung up and allowed the defense to come under it. Another interception for Reyes. That was unfortunate for Davis. They had a little bit going there. Now the Panthers another chance, this time at the Davis 36 yard line with 8.07 left to go in the second quarter. Panthers last time interception, the first turnover of the night for the Panthers. Sermon in shotgun. He's got Obadiah Young split out left side. Here's Blauman, who's been quiet here in this second quarter. One of the middle, kicks it back outside to stand, and then a nice tackle. Cook comes up with the stop, or Blauman would have had a huge gain there. That's a gain of about five for Nate Blauman over the left side. Now Malachi Cook, he can play some football too, Eric. He's had yeah. a few plays already in this first half. 5'10", 165-pound junior. I give credit to the coaching staff for Davis to go out and just get in the hallways and try to find these athletes, get them to play football. Absolutely. Handoff, here's Blauman, left side, cuts it up. Nice work once again by Blauman. Signature move by him, really. And that's another gain of about four. That'll bring up third down and two for the Panthers. 7-14, clock running here in this quick-moving first half. 13-0 our score. Panthers looking for more here, though, at the Davis 28-yard line. This time split out far side on the right side as Ta Dawson Pike handoff fake to a Blauman. Sermon's going to roll to the right side. He's going to keep it just to get the first down inside the 25. Lowers his head inside the 20. Flag comes flying in. Not sure what that's going to be over there. Think it's Sermon lowering his head, maybe? They don't call it a lot on the offense, but... Unless he lured his head right into a hand that was grasping his face mask. That's probably what it is over there. The Marked down yep. at the 12. Face mask. And he didn't uh, signal a personal foul, so just a five-yard face mask. Yep. So that was 11-yard gain. Was that down to the 19 on the gain? Nine yard again. Three carries, 15 yards for Sermon so far in the ball game. Panthers level first down. Now first and ten at the Davis 13 yard line. In business for sure here with 652 Ooh, left. Blauman gets hit in the backfield, gets away from the tackler, but still didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll be a loss of about two for Wenatchee. Luis Guadado got through. He just shot a gap there and was uh, almost in the lap of Blauman as he got that handoff. Lucky that Nate held on to the football and somehow was able to squeak sideways, but still a loss on the play. Davis done a, has done a nice job giving a lot of attention to Blauman tonight, haven't they? He hasn't had a lot of room to run. He's going to get his yards, but they've done a pretty good job this first half. Well, they also got, uh, what, five, eight guys in the box, almost nine guys in the box uh, saying, uh, come on, uh, Wenatchee, try to run it. Second and 15 now with that loss. Here's Sermon over the middle, wide open. It's Coons, drags a player into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers, 18 yards. Riley Coons from, uh, from Sermon. Boy, Coons just showing the strength that he's got. Once he got that football, he's wide open. The officials are still talking about it here. And uh, yes, I think they are going to say a touchdown. Boy, it looked okay. like he drug him just yeah. across the line. But great power for Riley Coons. And what a return to the lineup here for the Wenatchee Panthers. Oh, he sure has been. And as we mentioned, a great blocker as well. For on for the extra point now, Cesar Gonzalez for the Panthers. Low snap, nice job on the hold. Gonzalez up and booms it through the middle, and it's good. 6.05 left to go, second quarter. It's now the Panthers 20 and the Pirates nothing. We're back to the Apple Bowl in 30 seconds. Stay with us. Hi there, it's Les Schwab Tires. You know, we've been helping keep folks safe on the road around here since 1952. That's why you can save up to $152 on a set of four select light truck and SUV tires during our fall tire sale, all with a service you deserve 
but just don't find other places. Swing by or book an appointment at LeshSchwab.com. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Five plays, 36 yards on that scoring drive for the Panthers. It took off two minutes and two seconds off the clock. 18-yard touchdown pass. Camden Sermon to Riley Coons. A, pay, a point after try by Gonzalez. Good. And our score now is Wenatchee 20 and Davis nothing with 6.05 left in the second quarter. We'll have another update on Eastmont at Sunnyside of the battle for the top of the Big Nine. Coming up, our broadcast brought to you by Biosports Physical Therapy. Find them online at biosports.net. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Here's the kickoff by Gonzalez, and it's taken at the 10-yard line. This time it's Marcus Cook with it. Tries the left side. No, it isn't Cook, but runner Hersinger still. Again. Third singer, right? Does make it out Decent to the 30-yard line. Yeah, good field position for Davis this time at their own 30. Let's get you an update, Grant, on what's happening down in Sunnyside tonight in a battle. We knew it was going to be something else. 6.15 left in the first half. Sunnyside 12, Eastmont 7. Sunnyside uh, scored again and went for a two-point conversion, and it failed. Uh, it is Sunnyside leading Eastmont 12-7 uh, late in the first half. That is going to be some kind of finish down there tonight. We get them here next week. First down and 10 for the Pirates. Down now 20 to nothing. Reyes shotgun hands it off. Boy, just nowhere to go for these running backs tonight. It's a different running back. It isn't Gutierrez this time. Let me catch the number. It's number 22. 22. And that's Ricardo Acevedo. Acevedo is a 5'11", 170 pound sophomore. No gain on the play. Still second down and 10. Zacevito stays out there. Two receivers to the right side of the line of scrimmage. One to the left. That's the weak side. Now that receiver, Corbray, moves to the right side. Here's back to passes. Reyes, he's had a lot of time to throw it into the hands of, into the hands of his receiver. That was Kurt Singer. And he is going to take it to the house. 71 yards, a touchdown for the Pirates. Well, I told you before the game, Grant, all it takes is for one guy not to do his assignment or one guy to slip, one guy fall behind, and suddenly Reyes connects with the beautiful pass. Jackson Kurtzinger, the six foot, 156-pound senior, comes up with his sixth touchdown reception of the season. And just like that, Davis is on the board. Dawson Pike thought he had a sure interception he was running down the field with him. I think it might have been a Mezqua instead and he had his hands out like he was going to catch it here comes Kurt Singer grabs the pass and runs 71 yards for a touchdown how about that is they're going to go for two now the Pirates Tom 20 to 6 Reyes back to pass boy has no time at all and he is going to go down at the 10 yard line Silas so St. John getting in there along with uh, a little help inside from Andy Jimenez we've called his name a few times we here really tonight. have so 5'11", we'll keep it here this time. 71 yards on that play. Two plays, 71 yards for Davis. Only took off 36 seconds off the clock, just like that, 20 to 6. Our broadcast tonight here on the NCW Life Channel brought to you by Impact Auto Sales. They strive to impact your life, not your wallet. You can expect a hassle-free car buying experience at Impact Auto Sales in Wenatchee. Also by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Call the Pro Shop to schedule your time on their full swing S4 widescreen golf simulators at 884-4653. Plan your next tournament or event today. Also by Automoka. Visit one of their six locations in the Valley, including the only Automoka with inside seating on 5th Street across from the college. What's your Automoka emergency. So I woke the Panthers up a little bit. Uh, Five yeah. minutes, 11 seconds left to go first half. Kind of on cruise control and then hit a speed bump there. And it's 20 to six now. Davis with that nice touchdown play. Back deep to receive this kick for the Panthers. Nathan Blauman back there. And also back this time for the Panthers is uh, Tristan Plock. A 6'1", 185-pound sophomore, and he's a good-looking young runner. Well, J.J.'s normally back there, so J.J. not back in the game here. Right. It looks like he might be out for the rest of it. Alan Mercado with the kickoff, and it goes right to Blauman, fake it, fakes it to a plot. Blauman oh, still out. got it. He's got room over the 30, runs over a Davis Pirate. And the Panthers left pretty good field position once again. Boy, they've had it all night long. 
is this time at their own 33-yard line. And this is the second time is all out of six possessions, Eric, that the Panthers have started in their own end of the football field. Yeah, Every other possession has been in Davis territory. Definitely been slanted in the favor of the Panthers here. By the way, Camden Sermon on the night so far, 7 to 12 for 110 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Here's Sermon with the handoff, going to give it to Blauman. I think we're going to see a lot of Blauman here now. Gets his room over the 40, 45, 50. Stiff arms and gets into Pirate territory. It'll be down at the 47-yard line. 20 yards on that running play. Yeah, it seemed like nothing, didn't it? Yeah, he it's just, just crazy. And that's what Coach Jagla told me in the pregame when I got a chance to interview him this week. I said, Blauman, to block for him, what does he do for you? He says he makes the offensive line look really good because he gets to that second level. He just makes guys miss. He really does. So the Panthers back to the territory they've been used to here in this first half, and that's Davis Pirate territory. The ball now at the Davis 47-yard line. Blauman in the backfield, two receivers right side. Hand off, Plowman, big hole on that right side. He keeps those legs churning down to the 41-yard line. Gain of six for Plowman. Well, you got a guy that averages 8.9 yards per carry <laughs> coming in as he had, coming into the game, 107 rushes for 956 yards. By the way, he's over 1,000 yards now, nine carries, 77 yards here tonight. On the, in the seventh game of the season. Yeah. All right, second down and four for the Panthers now. A couple of guys in motion. Coon settles into the left side of the line. Blauman still in the backfield. Fake handoff to him this time. Sermon's going to keep it. Has Blauman as a lead blocker. Gets through the uh, first line inside the 35 down to the 33-yard line. And that'll be a Panther first down. Gain of eight. Oh, good job by Sermon again. I don't know if he saw the guy that got leakage into the backfield there, but was able to make the smart choice not to hand the ball off to Blauman on that option play left. Kept it himself, and as you said, had Blauman out there as a blocker. I don't think that was the intention of no. the play, but it works for nine yards at a first down. At the 33-yard line. Once again, the Panthers double tight end set left side. Sermon's got time. He's going to go over oh. the middle. Wide open receiver down the middle into the end zone. No signal yet. Boy, I think he was there. I think they're going to call him down, though, at the one-yard line. Josh Bouchong again on a 32-yard pass play. Wide open. Boy, he was wide open down yep. the middle. A little play action in the backfield. They're so concerned about Blauman running that football that every time they fake the ball to him, the defense bites on that, and that allowed Bouchong to get wide open for his second catch of the game. And how about Bouchong? He's got 52 yards in receiving. <laughs> nice night for him already in the first half. Panthers now, first down, and just back to the line of scrimmage. Good thing Blauman's strong, or he would have been a loss right there. <laughs> the defender coming up, Taylor uh, Taylon Diaz, 5'10", 186-pound bowling ball, came through there, just <laughs> shot the gap. And again, the offensive line having a tough time here, Grant. We've seen several right. times where the defensive front is getting through, just shooting a gap, and they're laying their ears back. This is a time for a counter play, a little trap. When the, they shoot so far up, just let them go, and they're leaving a gap right behind them. Good call. They got Coons in the backfield again as a fullback in an eye formation with Blaum in the up back. Fake this time. Sermon's rolling to his right. Does he have uh, a, enough room? And he does. That's Camden Lloydhammer over there. The backup tight end catches the ball. Touchdown, Panthers. I don't think it was drawn up that way because Lloydhammer was over there and so, too, on the offensive set on that side was Obadiah Young. They were nearly touching each other. <laughs> As Sermon came out of the backfield, he pumped once because they were way too close together, was able to throw it in there for a dart and a touchdown. Well, I thought there he was going to run out of room for sure. Gonzalez on for the point after try. Plenty of leg down the middle, and it's good. Three minutes, one second left to go before halftime. It's the Panthers, 27, and Davis, 6. We're back to the Apple Bowl on NCW Life in 60. Seconds. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita Mocha with Whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. 
My favorite is the mocha for pitas. A peach Red Bull. Welcome back to the Apple Bowl, where the Panthers now have extended their lead by three touchdowns. Our score with 3.01 left in the uh, second quarter. Wenatchee 27 and Davis 6. By the way, five plays, 67 yards for the Panthers. Two minutes, three seconds off the clock. One-yard touchdown reception for Camden Lloydhammer from Camden Sermon. The point after good, we're at 27-6. Here's the kickoff, and it's a grounder taken by Kurt Singer. He's taken all the uh, kicks so far tonight. That's a pretty good night, too, as he runs into some Panthers and over some Panthers all the way out to the 35-yard line. Well, Grant, we wonder what kind of night it would be. Would it be a night where the offensive line just settles down and, and decides they're going to rush the football? Actually, it's been a tight end night here tonight for Riley Coons, for Lloyd Hammer, for Bouchong. Tight ends really coming through because that defensive front, that front seven, they're really keying on the run for the Panthers. That is leaving the back end of that middle part of the defense wide open. You know, you're exactly right. And we talked a little bit about that in the pregame, Eric, that the Panthers might open it up a little bit through the air, and they sure have here in this first half. Whistle before the snap for the Pirates. Looks like movement on the offensive line, and that'll be on Davis, five yards. Sixth penalty against Davis for 50 yards here in the game. Our broadcast, by the way, brought to you by Town Toyota, your automotive home to quality and reliability in North Central Washington. All right, first down and 10, ball at the 30-yard line. Handoff up the middle and nothing doing for Gutierrez. Raymundo, their starting running back, and he hasn't had much success tonight. Gain of about two and a half on that play. Four carries, four yards for Raymundo Gutierrez here in the ball game. A little bit of a hurry up now for Davis, down as I mentioned by those three touchdowns. Second down and 13. Ball at the Davis 32 yard line. Reyes, a ton of time to throw again. He's going to throw one up and he's got. Kurt Singer again, all the way down to the Panther 41-yard line. 27 yards on the pass play, and he's just checking it up and waiting for his guys to run under it. So far, the Panthers have not been able to counter. Big play for Davis. Obadiah Young over there on coverage and just kind of lost it. And that was an easy pitch and catch once again for Davis. As the Pirates now in Panther territory at the 41-yard line. Reyes directing traffic. He gets Gutierrez to his left side. Here's the snap, and it's going to be a run by Reyes to the left. He did get a nice block from Gutierrez, and then he just heads out of bounds after a three-yard gain out to the Panther 39-yard line. So we'll give him two on that carry for Jose Reyes. Well, he's still trying to get him positive yardage after he's been sacked a couple of times. We've got a Davis Pirate that is shaken up on the play. And so we'll check a number there. Offensive lineman looks like Abraham Amazola. Amazola, six foot, 250 pound junior, is shaken up on that play. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by JDSA Attorneys, delivering quality and innovative legal services to North Central Washington since 1946. You can find Jefferson, Danielson, Son, and Aylward online, jdsalaw.com. Also by Weinstein Beverage Company, a family-owned business proud to support local high school teams. Find them on Facebook, follow them on Instagram. They're also on the web at weinsteinbeverage.com. Amazola up, walking with, off his, with his own, under his own power, favoring that right leg, so some kind of right leg injury. Hopefully it's just a cramp, something minor, but Amazola to the sideline for Davis. Pirates have second and eight now at their Panther 39-yard line. On a big, big pass play, a 27-yarder to get Davis in this position as the referees. Kurt Singer, by the way, three receptions, 104 yards Ooh. in this game. Wow. And now we're going to get a timeout taken by the Pirates. We'll take one as well. Minute 44 left to go before halftime. Then all Panthers, Wenatchee 27 and Davis 6. We're back in 60 seconds. One 
44 left to go here in the second quarter. Panthers lead it 27 to six. Davis timeout here as they are in Panther territory at the 39 yard line, hoping for some points on a nice drive previously for uh, Davis. 71 yard pass play highlighted that and Davis's only touchdown so far in this game. As both teams back out on the field now, Reyes at quarterback, and this time in the backfield with Reyes is number 33, Malachi Cook. Cook fake handoff, it's a play action, and Reyes under a ton of pressure, and he is sacked all the way back at the 45-yard line, and that'll be a loss of six yards. Silas St. John there on the stop along with uh, Lloyd Hammer as they two combine on the big sack of the play all the way back to the 45. Silas St. John has had a nice first half. We've mentioned him a couple of times, and Eric, you and I talked before, I guess off air, but about how Panthers would probably bring the blitz tonight. And there's a good example of they brought it. And I think we've seen quite a bit of blitzing done tonight. But the line of Davis, for the most part, has protected Reyes pretty well. Three sacks on the night for the Panther defense. Movement before the snap on a third down and 14. I think Davis is going to see a third down and 19 now as the ball will be placed just about at midfield. In fact, it's going to be right at the line. Got an update on the uh, game from down at Sunnyside here, Grant. The battle for the top of the Big Nine. It is late second quarter, just before half. It is 14-12 Eastmont on top. There's the pass downfield, and it was dangerous. Kurt Singer might have injured his left leg. Good coverage by the Panthers that time. Obadiah Young, one of the uh, players down there. And What'd Reyes, you say that score was? Reyes there? also got belted oh, at the end of that play. He is shaken up. Ooh. and out there, but he is not feeling too well right now. I didn't see the Panther that put the hit on him either. Uh, right before half, Eastmont leading Sunnyside now 14-12. Eastmont coming back a little bit. That's still going to be a great game in the second half. Fourth down and 19. Looks like Davis going for it here. Christian no. Castillo. Oh, no, he's going to punt. I'm sorry. That's Marcus Cook in there to punt. Wobbly kick that bounces at the 27, takes a nice Davis bounce all the way down to the 20. And that's where the Panthers will have it first down and 10 with 51 seconds left to go. And will that be enough time for the Panthers to move it down? Field? I think this is a good opportunity to run your two minute drill. You got three timeouts, you got uh, what 80 yards to go. And why not try to run that here and see what the Panthers can do before halftime? It is perfect opportunity for that hurry up offense. You're right, Eric. This is the seventh possession of this first half for the Panthers, leading it 27 to six. Two receivers left side, one to the right. Blauman as usual in the backfield with Sermon. Somebody jumped, I believe, yep. on the defense. Left defensive end. Nope, motion on the offense. Oh, it is, okay. Only the second penalty against Wadanchi now for 15 yards. Davis unofficially seven penalties and 55 yards. They're gonna have more penalties uh, almost than they do offensively here tonight. Right. First down and 15 now for Wenatchee. 50 seconds left to go. Same formation. Servant claps his hands and there's the snap. Looks left side. He has a Mezqua there and just right through his hands at about the 19. You really can't blame Sermon on that one. Ball was a little low, but a Mezqua coming out of his break had at least five yards on the defender over there. Malachi Cook on the coverage, and he just dropped that ball. He really did. They're playing so far off the defensive backs for Davis, at least 10 yards. I think we noticed that last week in Eastmont as well. Second down, 15 for Wenatchee. Sermon rolls across his body to the left side. There's Coons again on the catch. Nice tackle by Cook. Malachi Cook that time as Coons will head to the sideline, and that ball spotted at the 21-yard line. So six-yard gain on that pass and catch. Four catches, 62 yards in Riley Coon's first game back for the Panthers. Not a bad first half for sure. And we've got timeout called by the Panthers. We'll take a quick timeout too. 37 seconds left to go in the first half. Wenatchee 27, Davis 6. We're back in 30 seconds. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. 
Give us a call or visit our website today. Wenatchee football, third down and nine. The ball at their own 21-yard line. Sorry, <laughs> we just lost our antenna over the press box. <laughs> Sermon back to pass. Throws it to Blauman. Blauman with a good gain on the play across the 35 out this to the 40. Still on his feet all the way out to the 41-yard line, a 20-yard gain. What aren't you going with a hurry up offense? <laughs> Blauman's first catch of the game. Here's Sermon back to pass. He's got Blauman out in the flat right in front of the Wenatchee bench. Dives across the 50, and that's where he'll be marked. And that is once again close to a first down. He needed to get to about the 49. We'll call it second down and one now. He got nine on the play. 13 seconds left now. What do you do now? I guess you just air it out with 13 seconds. Maybe a screen pass or something like that would yeah, work. Go towards the sidelines again, see if you can get out of bounds on a quick play and then loft one towards the end zone. Two receivers right side, one to the left of Sermon, claps his hands again, gets the snap, goes left side of Mezqua at the 45, needs to get out of bounds, still on his feet inside and nice. does step out of bounds over there. Probably a good thing, too. It yeah. saved Gain some time. 16 yards Six on that play. Seconds left. Ball all the way now to the uh, Davis 34-yard line, first and 10, but a good chance this will probably be the last play of the first half. Well, you got room now to uh, run a pass pattern and maybe get a little option outside for Sermon here to loft one down towards the end zone. Empty backfield this time. Sermon back to pass. He's flushed out of the pocket. Malachi Cook, who's had a great first half. Sermon now looking to pass again under pressure and then goes down at the 42-yard line. Luis Guadado came through and just would not give up on the play. Sermon tried to set himself up there and just that little extra little hitch to get his arms switched around so he could throw towards the end zone gave uh, Guadado a chance to come in and make that big sack on the play. And that will do it for our first half. After two quarters of play here at Lebofto Field at the Apple Bowl, Big Nine football tonight. It's the Wenatchee Panthers 27 and the Davis Pirates 6. We'll be back in two minutes with halftime stats and more right here on the NCW Life Channel. Stay with us. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's automotive alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. My awesome is being part of the Nest Purse tribe. We have a tourism company and we highlight the history and culture of the Nest Purse people. I found Washington Trust Bank because they were very involved in the community. They believed in me. They definitely saw the need for this in our region. All the folks at Washington Trust Bank are phenomenal. They've done such a wonderful job helping me along my journey. What's your awesome? Whatever it is, we'll help you get there. Highlander Golf Course is proud to announce their two new state-of-the-art full-swing golf simulators with over 80 courses of virtual golf to choose from year-round. Or try their laser shot simulated firearm program or gaming with football, basketball, and much more. Enjoy Highlander food and drink service from their full-service bar and grill in the comfort of their simulator room. Call the Highlander Pro Shop to book your time at 884-4653. That's 884-4653. Hi, I'm Ricardo, and this is Amanda, and we are from Impact Auto Sales. Where you can expect a hassle-free car buying experience. With our wide selection of used cars, trucks, and SUVs, let one of our friendly sales staff help you find the vehicle that fits your lifestyle. We have financing available for all credit types and great low rates for first-time buyers. Call us today at 888-8000 or stop by 3522 State Highway 97A in Wenatchee. Impact Auto Sales, where we strive to make an impact on your life and not your wallet.
And welcome back to the Apple Bowl. Grant Olson along with Eric Granstrom here at Lee Bofto Field at the break. It's Wenatchee 27 and Davis 6. And the Panthers have been pretty dominating here in the first half. They got the scoring uh, kicked off on their second possession of the night. And that came with 522 left in the first quarter. It was a 10-yard touchdown run by Camden Sermon. Trying to go for two, it was no good. The Panthers led it six to nothing. On the very next possession, two minutes, 31 seconds left in the first quarter. It was a one-yard touchdown run by Nate Blauman. This time, Gonzalez on for the PAT. The kick was good, and the Panthers led it 13 to nothing. And then with 8.07 left in the second quarter, Panthers get on the board again. This time, an 18-yard touchdown pass from Camden Sermon to Riley Coons. The kick uh, by Gonzalez, good, and the Panthers at that point led it 20 to nothing. And then Davis got on the board with 5.57 left in the second quarter on a 71-yard touchdown pass from Jose Reyes to Jackson Kurtzinger. Two-point conversion, no good, and at that point, the Panthers led it 20 to 6. The Panthers weren't done, though, at 5.04 right after that uh, score by Davis. The very next possession, the Panthers... Goes 67 yards in two minutes and three seconds. A one-yard touchdown pass uh, from Sermon to Camden Lloydhammer. The kick once again by Gonzalez. Good. And that's where we stand right now with a halftime score of 27 to 6. So it's been pretty dominating, Eric. You'd think the score might have even been a little bit higher, but Davis, a spirited game in that first half. Absolutely. And uh, they came through with a few passes. They came through with some pressure on Camden Sermon in that first half, came up with a couple of sacks. The Wenatchee Panther uh, marching band out here, this is their big uh, competition coming up here soon, and this is their competition performance. Unfortunately, they've got their backs to our cameras, so kind of tough for us to show you a lot of this performance, uh, but we'll do our best here as they get it all lined up here. The Golden Apple Marching Band, an award-winning band right here in the Wenatchee Valley and the pride of Wenatchee High School as they get uh, everything set up here. But uh, as far as the Panthers are concerned, yeah, some missed opportunities. They had a short field several times in that first half of play. And like you said, they could have been uh, in the end zone a few more times. That first drive goes over on downs eventually as things kind of unwound there with a couple of, of uh, poor passes, we'll say. Uh, Camden Sermon not quite on his uh, mark here so far in this ball game, although his stats at halftime a lot better. Uh, we'll talk about that when we uh, come back from the performance here with the Wenatchee Golden Apple Marching Band.
the Golden Apple Marching Band here at Wenatchee High School at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl with the Wenatchee Panthers lead it here at halftime over the Davis Pirates by a score of 27 to 6. We'll have more here from halftime after this two-minute timeout. Get your recap of the statistics in that first half. And thanks for watching the Big Nine on the NCW Live channel. At Town Toyota, we believe in our community, and we're proud to support this broadcast of local sports. Town Toyota defines reliability and value in both its products and in the dealership itself. We are home to legendary products like the RAV4, Highlander, and Camry, not to mention Tundras and Tacoma trucks. Of course, we offer service for everything we sell and a great selection of pre-owned and certified vehicles as well. So enjoy the game and visit Town Toyota for all your automotive needs. My awesome is being able to share my passion for yoga. I found yoga in my mid 40s to help me kind of de-stress and calm down and it actually changed my life. Washington Trust believed in me. I felt like, okay, they got my back. I can, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna go for it. It actually makes you feel like more brave. I do have a lot of awesome in my life. What's your awesome? Whatever it is, we'll help you get there. No sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. for joining us here at halftime on the NCW Life Channel with the Panthers leading the Pirates 27 to 6 here at halftime. As the Golden Apple Marching Band continues to entertain here at halftime, let's get you the rundown on the first half stats as the Panthers lead it here at halftime. First for the Davis Pirates, they had a total of uh, minus seven yards rushing in that first half, 11 carries minus seven yards. Of course, three sacks making a big difference in the negative end of things for the Pirates. They were led by the four carries and four yards from Raimundo Gutierrez. Jose Reyes with five carries minus eight yards. One carry for minus three for Damian Corbray and one for nothing for Ricardo Acevedo. Meanwhile, through the air, Jose Reyes a little better. Seven of 11 for 140 yards. He has a touchdown and two interceptions. His big receiver on the night has been Jackson Kersinger. He has three catches, 104 yards, and a touchdown here for the Davis Pirates. One catch for Corbray for minus two. Nick Sosa with a catch for 11, and Zach Valencia with a catch for 11 yards as well. The Pirates were unofficially penalized seven times for 55 yards in that first half of play. So 137 yards of total offense, and most of that, in fact, all of that through the air here for the Davis Pirates in the first half. Much different story for the Wenatchee Panthers. They had 92 yards on the ground, 162 yards through the air, 254 yards of first half offense for the Panthers. Nate Blauman leading the way on the ground with 10 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. Camden Sermon's been sacked a couple of times. He's five carries for 15 yards here in the game. Through the air, Sermon is 12 of 18 for 162 yards. He does have two touchdowns and an interception in the game so far. Riley Coons with a couple of those touchdown grabs. He's got four catches for 62 yards. Two catches, 52 yards for Bouchon tonight. 
A uh, couple of catches for Nate Blauman for 29 yards. J.J. Jelsing with a catch for 15, but J.J. went down injured in that first half of play. Johnny Amezqua with two catches for 19 yards, and also Camden Lloydhammer with a catch for a touchdown of a yard out. And that is your story for the first half. Panthers unofficially penalized twice for 15 yards in that first half. So 254 yards of total offense for Wenatchee to 137 yards of total offense for Davis. And that's your story here at halftime where the Wenatchee Panthers lead it 27 to 6. So let's watch a little bit more and listen to a little bit more of the Golden Apple Marching Band here at halftime at the uh, Apple Bowl here tonight. performance from the Golden Apple Marching Band here at halftime at Lee Bofto Field at the Apple Bowl. We'll come back and talk about the keys for the second half for both teams as we continue after this two-minute timeout. You're watching Big Nine Football tonight on the NCW Life Channel. We'll be right back. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. When you call Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dix Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. Hi there. It's Les Schwab Tires. You know, we've been helping keep folks safe on the road around here since 1952. That's why you can save up to $152 on a set of four select light truck and SUV tires during our fall tire sale. All with a service you deserve, but just don't find other places. Swing by or book an appointment at LesSchwab.com. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Welcome back to the Apple Bowl. We're at halftime where the Wenatchee Panthers lead the Davis Pirates in Big Nine football action by a score of 27 to 6. And Eric, we mentioned a few times during the first half, we saw Davis last week as well against Eastmont. It was 42 to nothing at halftime in that game. And Davis, they look kind of like a different team here tonight, don't they? They have a lot more confidence in this game than they did a week ago. You know, I just wonder how much of that is having Jose Reyes as their quarterback. He was not their quarterback to start the game last week. And I think that there were some question marks about Valencia and his abilities at quarterback. Jose Reyes came out, and, and he looks like he's a guy in charge, not just his ability uh, athletically to be able to get outside and to make some plays on the scramble, but just in charge of that offense. Right. And the Panthers have played a solid first half, Eric. 
what do they do to maintain or even maybe extend this lead a little bit? Well, I think one thing that uh, they didn't do enough of in that first half, defensively anyway, was to get more pressure on Reyes. Now, Reyes has shown that he's been able to scramble and make some plays uh, out of the pocket, but uh, I think you bring your defensive ends up and uh, force him back inside to where the big fellas in the middle can come after him, maybe send a linebacker in the middle, keep him contained, kind of a Russell Wilson-ish approach if you're going against the defense uh, of, of the Seahawks on Sundays. So Ray is one of those guys that can move around, he can make some plays if you keep him contained and then also coverage downfield. Now uh, we'll see if J.J. Jelsing is available here for the second half, but it was obvious when he went down, suddenly the defensive backfield opened up and they got some big gash plays on those passes downfield and Reyes just threw those balls up, chucked them up and had his receivers run underneath of them. And Eric, Reyes has had way more time than I thought he would to throw tonight. Yeah. Not as much blitzing as I thought the Panthers might do. Will we see more of that in the second half maybe? I think they will. I really think that uh, Davis is going to get the football to start this second half after <coughs> when Anchi took it to open the ball game. So I think we're going to see more, maybe some stunts inside and maybe some more blitzing coming from the linebacker positions here by the Panther defense. Meanwhile, offensively, Wenanchi's got to be pretty happy with what they did. They didn't take advantage of all the opportunities they had in that first quarter, but uh, you still got to be happy about putting uh, 27 points up on the board here at halftime. And uh, I think we might see a little bit more Nate Blauman here in this second half as he finished the first half with 10 carries for 77 yards. And that puts him at 1,033 yards now on the season, which for the seventh game, well, six and a half games, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. Now, you were calling the games on radio for Wenatchee back when Sealby was here and was. set the record as far as yes. an individual is concerned. And, and uh, we'll have to check the record books as far as the Panthers are concerned. You don't want to get ahead of yourself either. No. But the way Nate Blauman is running the football, you just got to think that maybe some more of those records are going to fall. Yeah, I think his season record, uh, Jacob Sealby, was around 1,390 yards, I think. I'll have to go in the school and check that board and make sure that's the right yards. But Blauman's on track to break that for sure. Bruce Bennett will be one of those guys that can help us out on that Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Panthers, as Eric mentioned, will kick off here to begin this second half. Davis to receive. And back, Marcus Cook, one of the uh, men back there. Also, Raimundo Gutierrez. Actually, He's the it's Kurt Singer back there. Again. Oh, it is Kurt Singer. Yeah, number five. I have my glasses on. I still can't see the numbers. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's it's, it's bad. Got crunched up front. <laughs> There's Gonzalez's kick, and it goes left side to an up man. He's the big fullback. Going to take it right up the middle of the field. Why not? Number Aziz Martinez with the return <laughs> takes it out to the 35. <laughs> Nicely done. It's probably the first one he's had this year. 5'7", 175-pound senior. So the Pirates will begin with the football here to begin the second half. Ball at their own 35-yard line. And if you're Davis here, I, I, you try to run, I guess, enough, maybe quarterback keepers, that type of thing, maybe an RPO run option uh, for the quarterback to keep the defense honest. But they've had success through the air. That's been their only success has been through the air. So why not continue to chuck it up there? Well, that's true, too. All right, here we go with Reyes in the backfield, the quarterback in shotgun. He rolls to his left. St. John chases him, and he's got him at the 30, stops him long enough for some teammates to come in and help. And that'll be a three-yard loss as Reyes didn't manage to get back to the line of scrimmage. Great job of pursuit out there. You mentioned St. John has had a game of his life. Silas St. John, the 5'10", 200-pound sophomore, by the way, able to chase <laughs> that out and got some help from his teammates to make a, a loss on the play of three yards. Playing so well. Second down and 13 now. Ball back at the Davis 32-yard line. Two receivers right side on the line of scrimmage. Reyes in shotgun. A ton of time once again as he's going to skirt out. And then Lloyd Hammer grabs him just shy of the 30-yard line. That'll be another two-yard loss and another sack by the Panthers. Third sack, make that the fourth sack of the night for the Wenatchee defense. And this time, Grant, he didn't have anybody to throw to. That's a coverage sack right there because you mentioned he had plenty of time to try to look for somebody downfield. The coverage was excellent as we see J.J. Jelsing back out on the field here. So good to see him out there after he was injured in the first half. Nobody to throw the ball to and a sack for the defense. That tells you what a cover guy he is. We're not even looking that way now. It's, it's third down and 15, and Davis moves on the offensive line. Jimenez clapping his hands. I think it was big Kobe Rodriguez, the senior, 5'8", 205-pound tackle that moved there. I think they've got, uh, 
I'm smelling the concession stand here, Grant. I think I smell chili. I think somebody's got some chili nachos below us here. I can it's smell it too. It smells splendid. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Third down and 20 now. The ball all the way back at the 25 yard line. It started at the 35. Motion man Kurt Singer, fake handoff Gutierrez. Reyes gonna air it out downfield. Boy, had a man for a second. There's that Marcus Cook. You keep trying to get him on the kick return, and that ball just thrown down the middle. He's hoping and praying that Cook can run underneath of it. He does not fourth down and a punt for the Pirates. Minus five yards on that possession for Davis, not including the penalties. So the Panthers should get some great field position. Plus, as Eric mentioned, the ever dangerous J.J. Jelsin back in the lineup, and he will return this punt standing at the Panther 45-yard line. Punter is Cook, Marcus Cook, for Davis. As I mentioned, Jelsin standing in between the 45 and the 50. Snap is good. Here's the punt by Dude. Cook, a spiral, and it sends Jelsin back, but it gets a nice one at you. Bounce, still bouncing towards the 50, and that was... Very fortunate for the Panthers. They will begin at their own 48-yard line. 27-yard punt as it goes dead at the 20 or at the 48-yard line. So touchdown there. Boy, that punt was beautiful looking with the spiral off the foot, but it just uh, hit like a dart and then uh, like a golf ball on the green right. danced backwards. That's exactly what it did too. So the Panthers' first possession here of the second half, a three-touchdown lead, and we'll see what the Panthers come out with here. With Jelsin back in the lineup, a very good offensive receiver as well. Obadiah Young in the slot, Jelsin far side. Fake handoff is to Blauman, and Sermon's going to keep it. He's got a ton of room with Jelsin blocking in front of him. The 30 all the way down to the Davis 26-yard line. Beautiful read by Camden Sermon again. He's having a game of his life on this uh, night here, on this chilly night in October, and uh, just one, I mean, held that fake forever to Blauman, taking a look at what the defense was going to do. They bite going towards Blauman. He keeps the ball, gain all the way to the 26. So a 26-yard play. 26-yard run for Camden Sermon as he sends two receivers, this time left side. It's Jelsin and Young. No receivers on the uh, weak side, Sermon's going to keep it again. Gets away from the first tacklers. He's got room again inside the 15. Another first down for the Panthers. He gets down to the 13-yard line. Gain of 13. Marcus Cook comes up with the tackle again, finally. But again, a great choice by Sermon not to hand it off to Blauman. That's who they're keying on. So he keeps it himself. Didn't have a lot of room in that backfield, but takes it all the way down to the 12. Panthers wasting no time on this, their first possession of the second half, moving downfield. Seven carries, 53 yards in the game now for Camden Sermon. Panthers racking up the yards on the ground, and Sermon may put it up here. We'll see Blauman behind him this time in shotgun. Sermon will throw it. Left side, it's Jelsin at the 12-yard line. Jukes and jives. He gets away from his players and runs oh into the end zone. Touchdown to Jelsin, 13 yards. How about that? Man on man, Jackson Kurtzinger over there, fronting him, and Jelsin just put a little shake and bake, baby. Takes it in <laughs> for the touchdown. That was an athletic move by J.J. Jelsin. And the Panthers only three plays, and they went 52 yards. Took a minute 10 off the clock there, Eric, and they're already on the board. 33-6 pending this kick to make it 34. Here's Gonzalez, the snap and holder. Good, the kick perfect. And with 9.34 left to go in the third quarter, just like that, it's Wenatchee 34 and Davis 6. We're back to the Apple Bowl in 30 seconds on the NCW Life Channel. Stay with us. Highlander Golf Course is proud to announce their two new state-of-the-art full-swing golf simulators with over 80 courses of virtual golf to choose from year-round. Or try their laser shot simulated firearm program or gaming with football, basketball, and much more. Enjoy Highlander food and drink service from their full-service bar and grill in the comfort of their simulator room. Call the Highlander Pro Shop to book your time at 884-4653. That's 
Well, as I mentioned, that was a pretty easy drive for the Panthers there. Three plays, they went 52 yards and took off a minute 10 off the clock. 13-yard touchdown pass, J.J. Jelsin from Camden Sermon, a point after by Gonzalez, good. And our score now, Wenatchee 34 and Davis 6. Back deep this time, Tyler Gerrard for the Davis Pirates. Kurt Singer back there as well. It's going to go to that up man. No, it's not. As Gerrard will take it at about the 9-yard line. Tries the middle of the field. Ooh. Got some speed. Then gets hit hard at the 19 down across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Let's give credit where credit is due. Jesus Segovia comes up with the tackle on special teams. The 5'10", 185-pound sophomore gets downfield and makes the stop. So Davis, their second possession of the ball game. It comes, or so the second half, I should say. Comes with 9.29 left to go, down 34 to six now. I think it's about this their worst field start, aside when the uh, defense stopped Wenatchee on the first drive of the game. Right, it is. Davis on their last possession, the first one of this half, five, negative five yards on their last possession. First and 10, Reyes back in at quarterback. Two receivers left side, two to the right as well. One in the slot, Reyes flushed out of the pocket, goes left oh. side and in and out of the hands of Marcus Cook in front of the Panther bench and it goes incomplete. Boy, and up front defensively, Chase Lloydhammer was held big time. As he came on a stunt from his uh, inside tackle position, he was coming inside and had a bearing on Reyes, but he was held, no flag on the play, brings up second down and 10. Love those big, tall, Defensive ends, both Lloyd hammers on each end. Here it is, second down at 10 now, as Eric mentioned, for Davis. Big time rush, a blitz coming from the linebackers. Reyes, a floater down the sideline. Jelsey, oh, he did he it. catch he that pass? It, that it was, was against the back of Jelsey. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Marcus Cook, <laughs> down to the 50. <laughs> Caught it on the back of the uniform of the Wenatchee Panther, Marcus Cook possessed of the ball, reaching around, holding it with two hands around the defender. Jelsin can't even believe that that just happened. 29 yards on the play, all the way up to the 50-yard line. Jelsin had his hands up. He was on the receiver looking at him, and they caught it off his back. Unbelievable. <laughs> Incredible. Reyes now with it. <laughs> Davis in business at midfield. Reyes, and it's a misdirection but Lloyd Hammer was not fooled and that'll be a loss of five all the way back to the Davis 45 yard line how about Lloyd Hammer tonight Lloyd Hammer right there also defensively was uh, Malik Simeon for Wenatchee came up from his quarterback position smelled the run on that little counter play in the backfield and the Panthers up for the challenge Reyes back in shotgun, Waterman stays in at linebacker. Good rush this time as Camden Lloyd Hammer pursues. There's Jimenez running the quarterback out of bounds. And I don't know, I don't think he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Another he sack. Doesn't. And that's about a two yard loss back to the Davis 43 yard line. Good pursuit again by the Panthers and not giving up on that. I'll tell you another guy who's had a great game here is Andy Jimenez. He He's the one that chased that quarterback out of bounds. The big fella up, son, up front is just chasing <laughs> bodies all over. He's playing on senior night, and he's one of those seniors. Third and 18 now for Davis. Here's the big rush again by Lloyd Hammer in pursuit. Here comes Jax Tucker. Pass is caught far side, which is your near side, and it goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Still short of a first down, but definitely go territory for the Davis Pirates. 16 yards on that pass play, and that's what we talked about with Reyes' ability to scramble out and make plays and somehow find a receiver. That time he was able to find Ty Girard on his first catch of the game and maybe one of the few catches of the season. Right. Fourth down and four now. Big fourth down play for these Pirates. They want to keep this drive going. We'll see if they can do it against this very stout Panther defense. Pass over the middle right oh. into the hands. <laughs> of Dawson Pike, he dropped it. He can't believe he dropped it. And the Davis Pirates will turn it over on downs to the Panthers. That should have been a pick right there. Pike had that ball in his hands. He's thinking pick six, baby, but no, it doesn't happen. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Harvest Valley Pest Control. You can rest assured Harvest Valley Pest Control uses kid and pet safe material around your home or office. Call today for your free estimate. Also by Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort train specialist, specializing in commercial and residential HVAC systems online at DixHeatingWenatchee.com. First and 10 Panthers at their own 44-yard line. Whistles sound. 
I'm not sure if Davis had the right personnel out there, and I think Coach Dumas wanted a timeout. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left to go third quarter. It's Wenatchee 34, Davis 6. We'll be back in 30 seconds. My awesome is being part of the Nespers tribe. We have a tourism company and we highlight the history and culture of the Nespers people. I found Washington Trust Bank because they were very involved in the community. They believed in me. They definitely saw the need for this in our region. All the folks at Washington Trust Bank are phenomenal. They've done such a wonderful job helping me along my journey. What's your awesome? Whatever it is, we'll help you get there. We're back, hand off to Blauman, and you might have come back just at the right time. Blauman, a stiff arm, as he's chased out of bounds all the way down to the Davis 28-yard line. And a big, big run for Blauman once again. 34 yards, is that right on that? 38 yards. 38. Blauman now Over adding 100 to, yards on the night. Right, adding to that total. This time, J.J. Jelsing all the way split out far side of the field with Blauman behind Sermon in shotgun. Here's Blauman oh, again gosh. on the handoff, up the middle, keeps those legs turning, gets spun around and still gets about six, maybe seven yards inside the 25 to around the 23. Well, I, I tell you, there's a one-man guy out there for Davis who's had a heck of a game. Luis Guadado came up with that stop again. If he doesn't, uh, I think that uh, Nate Blauman's still running out there, but Guadado just was able to maintain his position on a block that came around. Meanwhile, the block up front for uh, the Wenatchee offense, trying to see who that was that got out there. It was number 70, I want to say. So they have, if that's 70, that's Cameron McKenzie. Got a good block. Absolutely. Sermon with Blauman this time to his right. We'll hand it to Blauman as Blauman comes left side. Nice block. Blauman all the way down into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers, 22 yards. Blauman second of the night. Nice block on that left side. It was big number 71. Trey Jagli saw him all the way. 5'10", 220 pounds, sophomore. Got a nice block, and that sprung Blauman into the end zone. On to kick Gonzalez. We're at 40 to 6. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 7-14 left to go third quarter. Wenatchee 41, Davis 6. We are back to leave off to field at the Apple Bowl in 30 seconds. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. Seven minutes, 14 seconds left to go third quarter. That scoring drive by the Panthers. Two plays, 56 yards. Took a minute, 16 off the clock. PAT good. Panthers now lead it 41-6. By the way, score at halftime from down at Sunnyside. What a second quarter for the East Mont Wildcats. They trailed this game at one point by a score of 6-0, then 12-7. 21-12, Eastmont went in at the halftime with the lead over Sunnyside, so they figured something out in that second quarter. And we'll keep you posted on that score as the kick by Gonzalez dangerously close to the out-of-bounds sideline, but it's taken anyway and run out to about the 25-yard line. That was Tyler Gerard on that return. So, yeah, it will be at the 25. Davis, their third possession here of the second half. And the Pirates have not been able to do much here against this Wenatchee defense. It's now just pinning its ears back 
and coming on one play after another. Meanwhile, we thought we'd hear a little bit about uh, Nate Blauman here in this second half, and sure enough, he was all of that last drive for the touchdown. Boy, he sure was a little bit quiet, I guess, for Nate in that first half, but he has definitely made his presence known, as Eric mentioned here in this second half, as the Davis Pirate offense runs onto the field. Down now 30, or 41 to six. Reyes still at quarterback for the Davis Pirates. Raimundo Guerrierez in the backfield. Reyes is just going to air it out. It's right into the hands of Mezqua. The interception, 30. Pitches it. No, he doesn't. Almost lost the ball. It goes out of bounds. <laughs> it flipped up right out of his hands at the 22-yard line. The Panthers will maintain possession. Is that as intercepted on the first play from scrimmage? Second interception of the night by Amezqua. Third pick of the game for Wenatchee, and they might have like two more here this evening, but uh, just playing center field out there, Reyes lofted that ball up. It hung up, and Amezqua able to come under it. High point that ball, come down with the interception and the return to the 23. The Panthers have outstanding field position here, already up 41 to six with exactly seven minutes left to go. We're only in the third quarter, folks. As Sermon in shotgun with Blauman to his right, a Mezqua in the slot, and we've got movement on that line of scrimmage, and I think the Panthers move that time. And they did, and that'll bring up first down at 15. Our broadcast tonight on the NCW Life Channel is brought to you in part by Global Car Care, a quality auto repair facility with highly trained technicians celebrating 25 years in the car care business. They speak your car's language at 1840 North Wenatchee Avenue. Also by Confluence Health, dedicated to improve their patients' health and safe, high-quality care in 12 communities throughout North Central Washington. Well, so many players have played great tonight, Eric, that you don't expect uh, Josh Bouchong, one of those players. I think Camden Sermon, or Camden Lloydhammer, the younger Lloydhammer, has played an outstanding game tonight. And St. John, here's the pass, and it is Bouchong at the 25. Get some of that back. Didn't get all the penalty yardage back, but got four of them. Miguel Seha coming up and saying hello to the receiver and <laughs> hung on for dear life, held him to a loss of a yard or a gain of four on that play. It'll be second down, about 11 coming up for the Panthers. Panthers need to get down to about the Davis 19 or 18 and a half for a first down. Six and a half minutes now left to go third quarter as Sermon gets the play from the sideline from the coaching staff. Pretty decent crowd on hand on this chilly night. Down down to 53 degrees. Still winds pretty much out of the west tonight, but haven't been much of a factor. Second and 11, Sermon shotgun. Claps his hands, gets the snap. Three receivers right side. Sermon's flushed out of the pocket, almost stumbles and falls. Now gets the pass away as to Jelsing. 20-yard line and then gets drugged down. Nice run, though, after the catch by Jelsing to the 18, gain of seven. Great job by Sermon there. They work so much together. They've worked in the offseason. Just put in so many hours of just running around on this field with no defenders out there. Uh, both Camden Sermon and J.J. Jelsing on the same page there. Good pitch and catch. Get positive yardage and live for a third down. And six for a first down for the Panthers. This is probably four down territory. I don't think they'll probably kick from down here, but you never know. Jelsing split out right side. Out to the left side for the Panthers. Dawson Pike, who's played a lot tonight and played well. Sermon shotgun. Handoff, it's Blauman right side, had some room, now shakes a tackler, cuts it back upfield, five yard line, inside the five, fights for the goal line in that pylon, did he get in? No. Clock will continue to run, he gets all the way down to the one, 18 yards. For Blauman that time, it'll be first and goal, Panthers. What a Just, great and, job of blocking on a, that right side. Again, I don't know how many times we could talk about it and try to describe it, but he just is somehow able to get forward motion despite the <laughs> fact that his hips are pointing one way, his shoulders are pointing the other. It is crazy. He's got great hips. We talked about that a little bit before the game, too. It's surprising. One-yard line, first and goal, Panthers. Hand up, up the middle. They gave that to a lineman. I thought it was number 70. Cameron McKenzie. And he scores <laughs> one yard out. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about it? McKenzie, a lineman. You don't get that chance very often. Well, they put that play in specifically because it's senior night. And Cameron McKenzie, the 6'2", 235-pound offensive lineman, comes up with six points. <laughs> That's very cool. 
All right, Gonzalez up on for the point after try. The kick up and the kick is good. 4.49 now left to go third quarter. We're gonna have a running clock here from the Apple Bowl. It's Wenatchee 48 and Davis six. We're back in 30 seconds. What's your Automoka emergency? It's a Frapita Mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frapita. Definitely espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha for pitas. A peach Red Bull. Well, the Wenatchee Panthers have really stepped on the gas here in this early part of the third quarter. Three possessions, three touchdowns. This last scoring drive, three plays, 23 yards, two minutes, 11 seconds off the clock. One yard touchdown run from Cameron McKenzie. The point after good, and it's 48 to six. And Eric, we'll have a running clock now the rest of the way. Yeah, and, and I'm afraid we've got some uh, junior varsity players that are out here getting a uh, little varsity time as this kicker is wearing number 32 for Wenatchee, and we don't have him on our roster, unfortunately. We've got a 33, that's Darwin Jimenez. And the Panthers, <laughs> with the new kicker out there, he wasn't ready to go, and now he goes and collects, <laughs> and the officials blowing their whistle, trying to find a flag here as the uh, <laughs> kicking team was a little bit off sides. He <laughs> got their arms up like, why? That was a great kick. It was a great kick. I'll have to consult maybe my junior varsity roster. See if I can find that here real quick. Some new bodies in as well for Davis. Back to receive the kick. In there is Raimundo Gutierrez. The deep man, by the way, is Tyler Gerard, And also back there is number five, Jackson Kurtzinger. So the Panthers will kick it off from the 35 now instead of the 40-yard line. 4.49 left to go, third quarter. Referees are kind of smiling right now. They thought that was <laughs> a little bit funny, and it was. Four penalties, 25 yards against the Panthers now. Boy, they got to be happy with that for yes. sure tonight. Another great kick. It's taken by Gerard at the 16-yard line. Looks up the middle of the field. Gets hammered down inside the 35 at about the 32. And that's where Davis will take over. First down and 10, but that clock is going to keep moving now, folks. As the Panthers have extended the lead over 40 points. Davis will start this drive at their own 32-yard line. Trying to get a score here on uh, what's happening down in Sunnyside. We heard the Eric Kuntz, our PA announcer, tell us a score, but we couldn't quite hear it cleanly. It sounded as if Sunnyside had scored. Last we had was 21-12. Eastmont leaning it at halftime, but uh, we'll, we'll check that. Dan Kuntz working on a score for us. Here's Reyes back to pass, has a receiver out there. And it's caught by Jackson Kurtzinger. Tackle for Wenatchee made by Tristan Plock. Gain of about four. They'll give him five, second and five. Clock moving still, if you remember that. 3.36 now left in the third. Reyes back to pass, quick hitter out in the left side. He's got a receiver there and a nice gain and a first down. It's Damian Corbray, who's been very, very quiet tonight, a nice seven yard play. So first down Pirates, this time the ball will be spotted at their own 47 yard line. How many yards did you say that? I'm sorry. A seven. Okay, thank you. Here's Reyes back to pass. He's gonna wing it downfield. Why not at this point? The ball was tipped oh! and then caught. Nice uh, concentration by Tyler Gerard, the junior, and that's a big gain all the way down to the 30-yard line. 23 yards on that pass play, and Davis in business now in Panther territory. I guess at this point, if you're Davis and Coach Dumas, right, Eric, you're just trying to do something positive here to 
you know, get your way through the rest of this big nine season as Reyes flushed out of the pocket and he's gonna go for a loss now. Gets tossed at the last second by Ty Waterman, well out of bounds, and he's gonna get flagged right at the sideline. Boy, just gave him a little bit of shove, about seven yards out of bounds, and that's all it took, and that'll be another a penalty on the Panthers. Just can't do that, just cannot have that. That's not sure why the clock has stopped. But it is, with 2.30 left to go here in this third quarter. It was a loss on the play, back to the 35-yard line, but add on the 15-yard penalty here. And we were just talking about how the Bonanchi Panther uh, coaching staff going to be happier about the penalties, not if it continues like this. Five penalties and 40 yards now against the Panthers. That's a costly one, and just really one that didn't have yeah. to happen. Right. Give Davis the ball at the 20-yard line. Still not sure why the clock isn't still running. Now it's now it's running. 2.22 left to go third quarter. First down, Pirates at the Panther 20. Reyes back to pass. Lots of time this time, and a nice pass to Sosa out of the backfield. That was a nice drawn-up play that time, all the way down to the six-yard line. And that'll be a first down. 14 yards on the pass play down to the six yard line. That's 234 yards passing tonight for Reyes. Here's Reyes and we've got a whistle. Timeout called by Davis and that will stop the clock with a minute 50 left. We'll take a break too. At the third quarter, minute 50 left to go. It's Wenatchee 48 and Davis six. We're back to the field in 30 seconds. Stay with us. Hi there, it's Les Schwab Tires. You know, we've been helping keep folks safe on the road around here since 1952. That's why you can save up to $152 on a set of four select light truck and SUV tires during our fall tire sale. All with a service you deserve, but just don't find other places. Swing by or book an appointment at LesSchwab.com. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. And we are back at the Apple Bowl as light rain now begins to fall here in the Wenatchee area. It was in the forecast tonight, so now it's falling and makes it even a little bit chillier out there. You got a score for us, Eric? I do. Uh, 4.15 left in the third quarter, and Eastmont now leads Sunnyside 27-19 with an extra point pending. So it could be 28-19 Eastmont on top in the third quarter, late third quarter down at Sunnyside tonight. Another tough one for the Wildcats on the road. They had a tough one, double overtime against West Valley. Now this tough test against Sunnyside, but it makes you a better team, doesn't it? It does. In the long run. Absolutely. All right, first down, goal to go for Sunny, or Sunnyside, for Davis. We just talked about them. Reyes, play action. He looks over the middle. Nobody there. Flushed out of the pocket. Still on his feet. Nice run by Reyes, and he's going to get in. Six-yard touchdown run for Jose Reyes. Left a litter of Panther players on the ground. Just juked left, came back right, right up the middle. And there's that athleticism by that basketball player turned football player. Takes it in for the touchdown from 16 yards out. 48 to 12 now the score. 68 yards for the Pirates on that possession. That's a pretty good drive for Davis, it wasn't was. it? Clock stopped at 143. As Davis will go for two here. Fake handoff again, play action. Reyes is gonna keep it. Will he get in a shovel pass? Did it get to the receiver? I think it might have. No call yet, or was there a call? Still no call. Incomplete. It might have bounced to him right in front of him. I don't think he thought it did, though. Now a flag flies. I think we had some okay. words for the official no, over no, there. No, I, th I think he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw that football. That could be. I think he was past the three-yard line when he went to throw that football finally. So that's an illegal forward pass, so the extra point is no good. Okay, so with 1.43 left to go here in the third, we're going to keep it right here. It's Wenatchee 48, Davis 12. 
Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Les Schwab Tire Center. Go online to leschwab.com. Find a tire store near you. Be sure to check out their fall tire sale going on now. And by Biosports Physical Therapy. Find them online at biosports.net. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And by Impact Auto Sales. They strive to impact your life, not your wallet. You can expect a hassle-free car buying experience at Impact Auto Sales in Wenatchee. All right, a minute 43 left to go third quarter. Four plays, 68 yards for the Davis Pirates. Three minutes on that drive, highlighted by a six-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Jose Reyes. So the Panthers lead at 48-12. Reyes with 13-21 tonight for 234 yards. Good game for yeah, him. Not bad. I'm not sure why we're not having a running clock, though. It should be running right now even, shouldn't it, Eric? It's maybe after a score it stops. No, but it should be continuous running. I'm not sure I'm, why it's not. We got that 42-point advantage moments ago when it was 48-6. to six, And once they should start the running clock, it doesn't stop. Even if the other team comes back and scores, uh, it should still be a running situation. So I'm not sure why that is happening right now. Or why it's it doesn't not stop. It doesn't stop during a penalty, though, does it? No, the only time it stops is during a timeout right, by right. one of the teams, which, by the way, Davis is down to one timeout left in the game. Down to one. So the officials had to come over to the Wenatchee sideline and tell the Panther coaching staff what happened. Now they just had the conversation with the Davis sidelines to tell them what happened. And again, I think that was an illegal forward <coughs> pass, and that's why there was a little discussion going on in the end zone over there by our officiating crew. So it was well officiated on that. Rich Halterman is our referee. Terry Ayton is the umpire. Tiana Peterson is the headlines person who was the one on the goal line there with that particular play. That was a heads up call over there because I was looking at whether he was gonna run it or not. You were calling it and he was just, I think half a step past the line of scrimmage when he shuttled that ball forward in the end zone. I think the receiver caught it. It, sh it could have been a two point conversion uh, completion. Uh, however, he was past the line of scrimmage, and so the uh, penalty assessed, and the penalty actually is going to be assessed here on the ensuing kickoff, I believe, or what will the co case be here? Now they're heading down towards the end zone again, possibly for another try. I don't understand this at all. Well, typically speaking, illegal forward pass is a loss of down, so that means you forfeit the extra point. Should be, in my estimation. But it looks to me like they're going to now they don't have a ball out mark <laughs> a penalty off <laughs> and they're going to give Davis another try. I don't understand this uh, at all. I don't either. So and, the Pirates and they need a ball out. out there. Yeah, and they do need a ball. And then now it's finally coming in from the far or from the near sideline to our <laughs> right, cameras. Right. So very interesting. Wow. Unless that was not the call, unless they called it a hold or something like that. But still, the Panthers could decline the penalty, and the extra point is no good. Right. That's what you'd so. think it would be. Well, they moved him back a ways. Five yards is all, it looks like. Boy, strange. Very strange. Now <laughs> got and now another penalty. Oh, no. A timeout going to be taken by the Panthers here. So... Unfortunately, we don't have the officials mic'd up, so we can't get in on that conversation. But our broadcast tonight brought to you by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Call the Pro Shop to schedule your time on their full swing S4 widescreen golf simulators. Have you ever played on that? I have. Oh, God. It's yeah, fun. yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. 884-4653 is the number to call. Plan your next tournament or event today. Also by Town Toyota, your automotive home to quality and reliability in central Washington. And by Automoka, visit one of their six locations in the Valley, including the only Automoka with inside seating on 5th Street across from the college. What's your Automoka emergency? The players and the coaches can't look ahead, Grant, but we can right. because we're just broadcasters. So <laughs> looking ahead... Three weeks from now, if all things remain the way they are, right now the game is scheduled for a Thursday night at Eastmont between Wenatchee and Eastmont and what could be for the district championship. The Big Nine has two seeds to the state tournament this year. So both teams, if they stay where they are, of course, Wenatchee still has Sunnyside to play next week. Right. Uh, but it could mean that we'll have that game for the Bridge of Sportsmanship and the District Championship on the line. And if so, they'll move great. it to Friday. Here's the do-over, and they get it this time in some weird circumstances. And the point after is good. 
A minute 43 left to go third quarter. Let's take a break. It's Wenatchee 48 and Davis 14. We're back to the field in 30 seconds. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. All right, so Davis on the board here in the second half, their third or fourth possession of the half, and they do make it good. Six-yard touchdown run by Reyes. Two-point conversion is good. Four plays, 68 yards, three minutes off the clock for Davis, and we're at 48-14. The clock isn't running. It should be running right now. We're in the third quarter. And that's, that's What happened? Third. We had such a fast first half. It's Yeah, it's been crazy here in this third quarter. Here's the kick now, and it's taken by the deep man. It's Jelsin, and he does hand it off. Plock, 20-yard line, 25-30. Stutter stepping his way up the field, across the 35 to about the 37. And that's where the Panthers will take over here at their own 37-yard line. With a minute 25 left to go in the third quarter, we are two minute, two hours, rather, into this ball game and still in the third quarter in a 48-14 game. And we had a really fast first quarter. Second <laughs> quarter was fairly thrifty. I'm not sure what happened here in this third quarter. Some penalties, turnovers, and uh, a lot of clock stoppage. Much to the chagrin of our camera crew here tonight. And that, I'm getting uh, word that the clock does stop after a score. So Okay, okay. then we had it uh, wrongly run in some East of our earlier games. Last week year. it ran the whole time, yeah, just about. <laughs> Here's the handoff once again, sidestepping his way as Plock. Plock. Good looking young player, 6'185 185-pound sophomore for the Panthers. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, I guess he does get back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. Second down and 10 for the Panthers. New quarterback out there as well for the Panthers. Malik Simeon is uh, controlling the offense now. We got some uh, new offensive linemen in there as well. We'll try to get them for you. Dawson Pike looks like he's in there as a wideout along with JJ, JJ Jelsing in there because well, they don't have uh, Esquivel, so they're kind of limited on the number right. of guys they have as a wideout. Nine seconds left in the third quarter. This should be the last play of the period. Plock with the handoff. Doesn't get too much, maybe a yard on that. And that'll bring up third down and nine, and that will end our third quarter of play. After three here at the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee, it's been all Panthers. Wenatchee 48 and Davis 14. We're back with fourth quarter action in 60 seconds. Stay with us. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. All right, third down and eight for the Panthers as we begin the fourth quarter here. Handoff is to Plock. No, it isn't. Play action. Simeon on the run and almost picked off, and that could have been a pick six. Jelsing, the intended receiver, but with his eye on it was Marcus Cook, and that was almost a pick six. Simeon showing some good range, good quickness to get out of the pocket. Nice job on the fake on the handoff to Plock. Faked us out. 
And then Simeon rolling out, but uh, need to set his feet a little bit before he got rid of that football. He didn't really have a lot of pressure there. Had some time, but a fourth down coming up for the Panthers. Looks like Blauman will be on to do the punting for the Panthers with Kurt Singer back to receive the kick, standing this at his own 25-yard line. Manchi's first punt of the game. It is the that? first punt. Absolutely is. And we've got a whistle and maybe some movement by the Panthers. And we did. Now six penalties and 45 yards against Wenatchee. They're just giving Blauman more room to punt. Right, giving him some more room as Kurt Singer moves up just a little bit now between the 25 and 30 yard line. Well, Blauman's averaged, what, 25.9 yards on a punt so far this year. And they're going to fake it. Well, the low snap was low, so he's just going to try to do what he can with it. Will Blauman get the first? He <laughs> will, all the way up to the 49-yard line. Needed to get to the 47, and that is a Wenatchee first down, 13 yards for Blauman on that run, and that adds to his rushing total. It does. 174 <laughs> yards rushing oh now on 15 God. carries. And that wasn't on purpose. That snap was low. He had the pressure coming. He had to get out of there. I think he was going to try to think about punting <laughs> it again, but he thought, oh, I got a little room. I'm going to run this. Boy, when things are going right, they're going right for you, aren't they? Ten minutes left now in the fourth quarter. Running clock. Panthers established 42-point uh, margin. Simeon, handoff, clock, 50-yard <laughs> line. Cuts it back up middle of the field. Nice cut back. Gets inside the 45 to the 43 and a nice gain of seven. Trey Jagla going after his dad's <laughs> insistence on getting a block there. Got outside on the edge and then made the block and then continued downfield and then ran into his own running back and helped push him for another yard. He's played a good game tonight. He's made some nice blocks. Some more players come off the field now. Some new players on for the Panthers. Now in Davis territory once again. Clock moving, 9.20 left in the game. And the ball at the Davis 43-yard line. Simeon still in at quarterback, came in for Sermon. Two receivers left side. Clock still in the backfield with <laughs> Simeon. And we've got movement once again. On the Panthers. Yep. Delay of game this time. You get a new set of players in there that haven't played a oh lot, yeah. and this kind of stuff happens. See if we can get another score on what's happening down at Sunnyside with Eastmont on the road tonight. In that battle of unbeaten, somebody's going to come out of there with a loss, and at last check, Eastmont was up 27-19. We'll try to get another score for you. Second down and seven for the Panthers. Uh -oh. Simeon runs into Plock. Plock gets the football, takes a hard hit at the 45 and bowls his way forward. And that's where he'll be marked at the 45. Gain of about two. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Panthers once again. Simeon uh, handed that ball off. Third but down, he, excuse me. He uh, handed his arms clear through <laughs> the running back. Plock's hands and the ball almost came out on the other side in midair. So the Panthers third down and four. Ball at the Davis 45-yard line. Simeon at quarterback. Hand off Oscar Martinez. Left side, Boise, quick 40, 35, and then gets run out of bounds. Actually at about the 37-yard line, so a gain of eight for Oscar Martinez, 5'7", 150-pound senior. Is that great? He's a senior and gets a nice run for a first down. Well, we've seen that a couple of times where they've given seniors the ball that don't normally get the ball. Earlier, it was Big McKenzie for a touchdown. Right. A lineman. Offensive lineman. Martinez only 150 pounds, but very quick. As the clock continues to move now, 7.15 left to go. I think you call him a scat back. He is a scat back. Simeon shotgun. It's Martinez again. Has a big hole in the middle of the field. We've got a flag flying, though. Maybe holding as Martinez drugged down at the 32-yard line. Just give some credit where the uh, offensive line is, even though they're going to get penalized here. Let's see out there on the offensive line right now. Drew Nielsen is one of the linemen. Uh, let's see if we can get some other numbers here. Looks like Josiah, or jo uh, yeah, Josiah Moore out there on the offensive line. Mason Moore for the Panthers. 
so great. A lot of the names you just mentioned, Eric, sophomores on this yeah. roster. So that's good playing experience tonight. Absolutely. This so ball is taken all the way back to the 48-yard line now. That'll bring up first down and 20 for the Panthers. The clock continues to move. Running clock, as we mentioned, at 620 now oh. left in the game. we got a score update for you from Sunnyside after this play, Grant. Uh-oh, first and 20, Simeon and Shotgun standing in Wenatchee territory. Here's Plock now looking for a block right side. Finds the block, finds the edge, rather, and we may have another hold as Plock is out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Got two flags on this play. Score update in the fourth quarter, Eastmont 28. Sunnyside, 26. Holy cow. Look out. Oh, man. <laughs> Eastmont's already had a double overtime yeah, game this no year. That's some tough going on the road. At Sunnyside, at West Valley, a very surprising team this year. And Sunnyside will have right here next Friday homecoming at the Apple Bowl, and that's going to be a lot of fun, especially if Sunnyside can pull this out tonight oh, yeah. at home. That's going to be some kind of battle here Absolutely. next Friday. Absolutely. So the penalty on the Panthers again, and that's going to be an even longer first down play now. Eight penalties, 60 yards on the uh, Panthers here tonight. A lot of this coming here in the last uh, few minutes of this game as the rain really starts to fall out there right now. Second down or first down in 27. Here's Simeon. He's going to keep it this time up Ooh, the middle and gets popped. Raymundo Gutierrez. No, it wasn't Gutierrez, it was his number 24, and a nice play by him. Talon Diaz, a couple of big hits he's Oof. had in this game here tonight. Those are a tough two yards right there by Simeon. As that brings up second down at 25 now, 440 left to go in the game. Dawson Pike still out there for the Panthers. Also one receiver is Darwin Jimenez, a senior at 5'7", 150 pounds. Plock, the handoff, tried the middle, then went to the left side and will lose yards as he is dropped down at the 45-yard line. Loss of three yards. Third down and 38. What's in the playbook for that, Eric? Chuck it. <laughs> <laughs> now, they'll probably stay to the ground here, but... So we dip under four minutes now left to go. It's amazing how fast this game goes when you leave the clock running. It's crazy. Our fourth game broadcast this year where we've had I, a running I've clock. I've never had that in my entire no. career, ever. Uh -uh. All right, third down. The haves 30. and the have-nots of the big nine, Boy, that's for sure. Yes. Handoff, Martinez once again. Oscar Martinez, and <laughs> another, another flag. flag comes in. Goodness. <laughs> and here we, we, were, we were so happy about the lack of flags in this game. That's against Wenatchee. That'll be 70 <laughs> yards and penalties against Wenatchee. Boy. That'd give us 135 yards total between the two teams. Too bad. That is a hold against the offense. Our broadcast tonight here on the NCW Life Channel brought to you in part by Jefferson Danielson, Son and Aylward attorneys delivering quality and innovative legal services to North Central Washington since 1946 online at jdsalaw.com. Also by Weinstein Beverage Company, a family-owned business proud to support local uh, high school teams. Find them on Facebook, follow them on Instagram. And also online at WeinsteinBeverage.com. Hey, by the way, thanks to everybody who is uh, watching the game on our Facebook stream here tonight. Appreciate you being out there. Been getting <laughs> messages during the game here. And uh, folks appreciating the fact that we're keeping them up to date on what's happening in the game down low, down in the uh, Yakima Valley between Eastmont and Sunnyside. I was going to come right down to the end. Boy, it is. As you mentioned it, Eric, the rain actually a little bit heavier now. It started, what, about, about the time the third quarter started, I guess we noticed that the rain was coming down. And I'll go ahead and uh, tell the, the gang right now with our, our crew here tonight, we will not have a post-game show down on the field. We will wrap it up here from the booth and get you guys out of here and get our cameras dry, get you dry, <laughs> get you warm. Did we get a big thumbs up? Oh, uh, we got your wife dancing down there. Oh, she's yeah. dancing. Yeah. Oh, wow, how about that? <laughs> I guess that's a big thumbs up, That right? was a major thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Panthers come back out on the field, facing a third down and 27. The ball 
at their own 46 yard line with 251 left to go. As soon as the play begins, the clock will once again run and not <laughs> stop unless there's another timeout. Sorry, I was just looking at a comment on Facebook. <laughs> Simeon handoff, Oscar Martinez. He's quick around that right side, gets a block, gets down into Davis territory to the 45-yard line. That's a nine-yard gain and a nice run for Martinez as the Panthers forced to bring the punting unit on. Two carries and 18 yards for Martinez. Finally got to carry the ball and no flag down. Ten one plays one of, on that drive for the Panthers. That's the longest drive we've had tonight. One of those uh, comments on Facebook says, I'm watching this game from Arkansas, and those refs don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that yeah. person is... is <laughs> hey, they've done a good job here today. Well, it has been. They have. We're, we're just you know, a little better than we've seen And, they, and this is something that I should know, but I don't, uh, being a former official myself, as far as the running clock is concerned. Um, from my perspective, the running clock was a situation where it would only stop on a timeout. If you had one team that uh, gained a 40-plus point lead, you start the running clock, and then it continues to run only if they're, well, injury right. or a timeout right. is when the clock stops. But neither here nor there. No, it isn't now. Minute 36 left to go. Davis still looking to the sideline. I don't think they have enough players out there, do they? No, they don't. Here's another player running onto the field late now. Still only with 10 players out there. More players. Now they've got like oh, 13 not, out now there. Now they've got too many. There, now it's a delay of game. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Carino. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Her back judge. <laughs> didn't throw the flag. He dropped it out of disgust. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, goodness. Fred, the clock's still running for you, yeah. bud. 55 seconds now left. By the way, coming up this weekend here <laughs> on the NCW Life Channel, be sure and tune in tomorrow. Live coverage of Wenatchee and Eastmont soccer. How about this one? Sebastian Moraga, Matt Weisen have your play-by-play -play tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock here on your home for local sports, the NCW Life Channel. Also tomorrow night at 6.30, we'll rerun the West Valley Eastmont football game from back in September. Sunday at 2 o'clock, it's Moses Lake and Eastmont volleyball, and then at 7 o'clock, Davis and Eastmont girls soccer right here on your home for local sports, the NCW Life Channel. Not sure what the call is here. A flag flew as you were reading that, on Eric. On the Wenatchee side, I think. Yeah. But they didn't mark anything off, so I'm not sure I think what's going on. Offsetting, right. maybe penalties. All right. I'll All say right. That. Davis back <laughs> out there on offense. Reyes still in at quarterback. Pretty much the starters out here still for Davis. A few new linemen out there with the white jerseys, but Reyes is going to roll out to his right. Has lots of room and lots of space to throw. And he had a wide open receiver, Marcus Cook, and overthrew him. It goes out of bounds, incomplete, and the clock's still running. 24 seconds, clock still moving. Maybe time for a couple more plays here. 17 seconds, Reyes gets the offense up to the line of scrimmage. Most likely will be the last play of the game. Reyes back to pass, under some pressure. Here's Jimenez, and will it, Andy Ooh. get there? He does it, nice hustle though. Reyes still on his feet, right side, and he runs out of bounds. It's not gonna help you though, bud, as the time runs out, and that, is our ball game. Final score here from Lee Bofto Field at the Apple Bowl as the Panthers pick up another Big Nine League win. Our final, Wenatchee 48 and Davis 14. We'll take a two minute timeout. We'll come back with post game stats and more right after this. No sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. My awesome is being able to share my passion for yoga. 
I found yoga in my mid 40s to help me kind of de-stress and calm down. And it actually changed my life. Washington Trust believed in me. I felt like, okay, they got my back. I can, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna go for it. It actually makes you feel like more brave. I do have a lot of awesome in my life. What's your awesome? Whatever it is, we'll help you get there. Les Schwab Tires. You know, we've been helping keep folks safe on the road around here since 1952. That's why you can save up to $152 on a set of four select light truck and SUV tires during our fall tire sale. All with a service you deserve, but just don't find other places. Swing by or book an appointment at LesSchwab.com. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing since 1952. Welcome back to the Apple Bowl. Grant Olson along with Eric Granstrom with the Wenatchee Panthers have improved to 6-1 overall in the season with a 48-14 win over the Davis Pirates. And the Panthers didn't waste any time as we take a look at the scoring in this second half. First possession of the second half is a 13-yard touchdown pass from JG or from uh, Camden Sermon to J.J. Jelsing. The kick was good. That made the score 34-6 early in the third quarter. On the very next possession, the Panthers scored again on a 22-yard touchdown run by Nathan Blount. That kick also good as the Panthers then extended the lead to 41 to 6. And then Panthers got the running clock as they scored on their very next possession as well. A one yard McKenzie run. The big lineman got his chance. Uh, we're talking Cameron McKenzie, the senior. The PAT good on that as well. And that made the score 48 to 6. And then Davis had a scoring possession. Four plays, 68 yards. It was a six yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Jose Reyes, the uh, two point conversion. They got a couple of shots at it, and they did get it the second time, and that made the score 48-14. Panthers had the ball, uh, and it was turned over on a punt in the late in the game. First punt of the Panthers in the second half, and then Davis had the football and just ran the clock out across midfield. So not a whole lot of scoring, Eric, in the second half, but much like the first, it was all Wenatchee Panthers. Panthers uh, did it uh, on the ground and through the air here tonight, scoring four touchdowns on the ground. And uh, good night again for Nate Blum when he finishes with uh, unofficially 15 carries, 174 yards, and two touchdowns on the night. And added another little nice scamper there Absolutely. as a punter at the end when he Probably was thinking he was done for the evening. Camden Sermon, seven carries, 53 yards, and a touchdown as well for Camden here tonight. So a pretty good game through the air and on the ground for the quarterback, the junior quarterback for the Wenatchee Panthers. Meanwhile, Tristan Plock, five carries and eight yards, and we cannot forget the one-yard touchdown carry for Cameron McKenzie, the 6'2", 235-pound senior on senior night. Very gets cool. the handoff and gets the touchdown plunge. Martinez finishes with a couple of carries for 18 yards. Simeon, one carry for two yards in the game. Uh, the Panthers, 256 yards on the ground and four touchdowns here tonight. Through the air, Camden Sermon was able to certainly use his tight ends here this evening. He finishes the game 15 of 21 for 184 yards. Had uh, three touchdown passes and also... Uh, one interception, the only blight on the night for Camden Sermon. Simeon 0 for 1 in the game, so the Pants uh, Pan uh, Panthers passing attack, <laughs> I'd say that six times fast, 15 for 22 in the game, 184 yards through the air, 440 yards of total offense here for the game tonight. Uh, Nate Blauman, uh, two receptions, 29 yards. J.J. Jelsing, three for 33 and a touchdown. Johnny Amezqua, two catches for 19. Riley Coons, how about his night? Four receptions, 61 yards, a touchdown. Uh, Josh Bouchon, three receptions for 56 yards. 
and also Lloyd Hammer here tonight. Camden Lloyd Hammer with a catch for a touchdown from a yard out. So they spread the ball around tonight, and the Wenatchee Panthers uh, get it done with 440 yards total offense to 239 for the Davis Pirates. By the way, the sacks on the night uh, for the Panthers, how about four sacks in the ball game? And uh, I got to give a big uh, feather in the cap for Wenatchee to Andy Jimenez. That guy was running all over the place here in this game tonight. And, of course, uh, three interceptions by the defense, two of which by Amezqua. Uh Johnny with a good night, and the Panthers, well, they take care of business here at home and pick up the win. I think that uh, Jimenez stood out to me tonight. Both Lloyd Hammer brothers yep. played outstanding, and so did Josh Bouchong. Yep in a uh, kind of a backup role, but played fantastic football tonight. So the Panthers improved to 4-0 and now in the big lot, 9 and 6-1 and overall this season. How about that? We'll see if we can get one more score here before we wrap up the broadcast on what's happening down at the uh, Sunnyside High School. So Dan Koontz has been keeping us abreast of what's happening. Hopefully Dan's still got an ear on what's happening on that game. Uh, by broadcast, by the way, by our friend uh, Steve Oak on uh, Core right. Community Radio. Uh, at last check of the fourth quarter, 28-26, Eastmont on top in that tight one down at Sunnyside, Oof. a very difficult place to play. It is. Sunnyside uh, will come up here next Friday night for the Panthers' homecoming game tonight. And, man, all of that on the line over the final three, four weeks of the season. I can't wait. And, you know, the Panthers one. have a little payback on their mind from last year oh, down at Sunnyside. Absolutely. So. And that's something that Wenatchee's not been shy about talking about from before the season started when I sat here on the field in August with Coach Scott Devereaux saying, okay, well, wh what are the goals this year? Well, beat Eastmont is always the number one goal for Wenatchee, and that's also the number one goal for Eastmont if you're across the river. Right. But also to get a little payback against Sunnyside. The two teams played here at the summer football camp, and uh, fisticuffs uh, erupted because of a uh, little skirmish that happened right. during summer camp here at uh, Wenatchee High School. So those two can't wait to get together next week, and the Panthers would uh, love it if uh, somehow Sunnyside able to knock Eastmont off tonight. They Absolutely. would love it if they could uh, knock it off the Wildcats, uh, but we'll see, waiting to see if we can get one more score before we wrap up the broadcast. Let me thank our crew here tonight while we got a moment, and uh, a special thanks to, of course, Malcolm Whitehall back in the studio, uh, running the knobs and switches back there to uh, make sure that we're on the air here this evening. Tucker Wagner taking care of things in the van as well. Tucker giving us a wave, and Dan Kuntz, our line producer once again here this evening, up high High atop in the wind and the rain tonight. Not a lot of wind, but a little wind was uh, Jessica uh, up there to help us out to on uh, what was happening up above. We had uh, Josiah Davison down in the uh, stands. On the field side was Anna Nelson. And, of course, my much better half, Camera 2, once again, doing a stellar job. <laughs> Marion Grandstrom. Did we get a little dance again on Marion? I don't know down if there? she can hear you anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe she just tuned you Maybe out. nobody can hear us. But that's going to wrap it up for our broadcast here tonight as the Wenatchee Panthers get the big victory over the Davis Pirates and, as Grant said, uh, improve their season to 6-1 and one overall, 4-0 and oh in the Big Nine, still in line for a Big Nine championship. Who knows what happens. We'll see you next Friday night right here for homecoming with a big matchup against the Sunnyside Grizzlies. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching High School Sports on the NCW Life Channel. Tonight's broadcast was brought to you by Harvest Valley Pest Control, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Confluence Health, Les Schwab Tires, Biosports Physical Therapy, Impact Auto Sales, The Hot Under Golf Course and Grill, Town Toyota, Auto Mocha, JDSA Law and Weinstein Beverage. This concludes today's coverage of high school sports on your home for local sports, the NCW Life Channel.